The podcast which you are about to listen to is an account of the tragedy which befell a group of three lads, in particular, Iron Frank Wesker and his invalid brother, Nate. It is all the more tragic in that they were hungry. But had they eaten very, 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 very much glob, they could not have expected, nor would they have wished to see as much of the Madame Macabre as they were to see that day. For them, an idyllic afternoon became a nightmare. The events of that day were to lead to the discovery of one of the most bizarre crimes in the annals of Gornal history. The Grondin's Globbing Massacre. Hello, and welcome to the first episode of We've Not Seen, which is a new uh, series we're starting with gaming at Grondin's. This is a little spin-off podcast at Grondin's to hopefully make your commutes or just your leisure time that little bit better. Pagging! Pagging! So I'm I'm Frank Wesker, and who are we here with? I'm Hollywood. That's Hollywood. I'm Natey Boy. And that's Nate. And uh, today we've watched The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, a uh, 1974 film directed by Toby Hooper. Um, obviously, I've seen it quite a few times. I've seen it. <laughs> Hollywood's seen it, so who hasn't seen it? Well, I've seen it now, and I. Nate has now seen it, but, <laughs> yes, pr- yes. but prior to two hours ago, Nate had never seen. Um, so, yeah, brief summary of the film, in case you haven't seen it. It's uh, en route to visit their grandfather's grave, which has apparently been ritualistically desecrated. Which you saw. Yes, we did see. Five teenagers drive past a slaughterhouse, pick up, and then quickly drop a sinister hitchhiker. Well, Eat some delicious home-cured meat at a roadside gas station, before ending up at the old family home, where they're plunged into a never-ending nightmare as they meet a family of cannibals who more than make up in power tools what they lack in social skills. So if you heard that, Summary before watching the film, would you have wanted to watch it, mate? Not really, no, because again, it's not my cup of tea, is it? What? However, it's, I mean, I don't like any kind of horror, but this isn't like supernatural horror, so no, no. <clears throat> I'm always, I wouldn't say like grounded in realism because I like science fiction, <laughs> I like a bit of fantasy and stuff as well, but grounded stuff, in realism, you love Superman and Star Trek, but sometimes, yeah, horror, I can't, I can never get behind, but this is. Wasn't kind of supernatural, so I wouldn't be like going, "Oh, God, spooks! This is just <laughs> silly." It was about a crazy hillbilly, so it's like I won't like it, but it'll be the lesser of, you know, the evils that I could have watched throughout the, all the horror genre. Mm. See, I, I'm a big fan. Like, I like this. I like all the se- well. I say all the sequels. Really, I, I like all of the sequels. All I, seven or eight of them. I like this. I like the second one. Um, I like the Platinum Dunes remake. Like. 2003, as far as they go, like when you compare it to Friday the 13th it's and too Nightmare, goopy. it feels different, but it's still good. Which is like, the one that uh, you mentioned about Do You Think Us or something that like that? That was the most recent one called Leatherface, yeah, yeah. which <clears throat> is a prequel to the one you've just watched because they've made a sequel, a reboot, a sequel to the original that we've just watched ignores the second one, another sequel to the original which ignores the first two sequels. And then a reboot, a prequel to the reboot, and a prequel to the original. They've made millions of them. Yeah, there's loads. Why? Money. Yeah, money talks. Well, uh, by <coughs> Michael Bay produced the remake of the most famous one, the two thousand three. By his own admittance, it was purely to make money. I'm guessing as well then that the budget for this would have been extremely low, so any well, profit would have been quite. Well, the, the budget for this it was three hundred thousand dollars. This was made on. And what did it gross? The gross was thirty million eight hundred fifty nine thousand yeah, dollars. Well, that's why they made a sequel. <laughs> exactly. That's a lot of meatballs. <laughs> so, but were the subsequent films also like low budget, or did they? The second film had a bigger budget. Yeah. yeah. But it was widely panned when it came out. But now it's considered a cult classic because it, it's it really insane. Is. I, mean, it's I love it. It's it is. It's bombing. insane. <laughs> Dennis, well, didn't, didn't Dennis Hopper say it's like the most ridiculous thing he's ever done? It's really. Dennis Hopper at his full 100% Hopper, isn't Well, the yeah. DVD is like behind me. I, I haven't seen it, but I've read the synopsis on the back, and like this is, just sounds it's sad. Ridic- I love it, though, simply. I won't talk about it too much, but because of that's, Tom that's, Savini. That's when we watched it. Because Nate's yeah. never seen that either. Na- no, he's not. Exactly, but I think we should get into the film. Go on, then. But go on, briefly, no, a little bit of background oh, to the film as well. Um, two things inspired it. First of all, Toby Hooper was walking through a department store, and someone was revving a chainsaw, and he or what if in a department store so yeah, he, he, was, he, was, he was in a yeah. hardware store and he thought how would I get through all these people what What would I do and he had the train store and he thought there's an idea and the second part is based off the serial killer Ed Gein in America and a lot of horror films involving psychos cannibals uh, are inspired by Ed Gein basically who uh, killed people he made 
chairs out of them, he made dresses. lamps out of them, dresses, he made a real skin suit, and this is a real person. So a lot of the stuff that you see in these films is inspired by Ed Gein. The story choice purport to be based on a true event, it's not. Yeah, that's why my first big note in this book, he just, no, it's not, as the narrator was talking about And it. the narrator himself wasn't even paid to um, do the narration, he was paid in weed. Yeah, he was given a spliff. It was a John Larroquette, who like who was unknown at the time. But didn't he was he in some American sitcom or something? He became think, quite yeah, he he's quite well known in America. But um, yeah, with the thing with Ed Gein as well though. Technically, I was like reading about him. He's not classed as a serial killer because he only ever killed two people. He did a lot of he did a lot of grave robbing and stuff like that. But the actual murders are only two. That, so it's more what he did with the bodies. Yeah, yeah that, that's is the that most. who Buffalo Bill was based on as well. Buffalo Bill, Norman Bates, um, a lot of people took inspiration. Yeah, from, from, a, lot of, from Ed a lot of the people. It's all a lot of films involving anything to do with body mutilation, killers, desecration, wearing stuff. Basically, it, is, like it all comes back to that one chap, Ed Gein. Oh, yeah, so it's like it. going back to what you said at the start. It's that realms of possibility. Well, exactly. That's why I was more open to this. I mean, I will watch stuff, but I'd be more. I was more open to this because, again, it is grounded in. You know, I know it's not true, but it is grounded in reality. That could technically happen. Exactly, a bunch of crazy in Red Hill Billies massacring and eating people. He's not. It's not unheard of. No, it's not unheard of. So if, if you yeah. if you are listening, Ed Gein, um, I'm not too fond of what you did, but at the same time, if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't be having this discussion now. Swings and roundabouts in it, so it's all good. But yes, yeah, so we start off with the narration. Who, as we said, he wasn't even paid in money. Did it, did it not set a nice atmosphere for you? Did you get hyped for the film, thinking, oh, all these kids got slaughtered? No, because I already in my mind knew that it wasn't real. Oh, okay, fair enough. I, think, I didn't know it as a, yeah. I didn't know it as a fact, but. I don't know, I was reading it, I was like, no, this isn't real. Uh, at the time, a lot of people thought it was, didn't they? A, a lot of people And did. people were even making up well, stories saying, oh, this did happen. Well, that's what, well, the cinemas because I couldn't sit through Well, it. that's what I was thinking. I was like, well, they would have put this in because clearly it would have appealed to more people and it would have sold better if they believe, believed it was a true story. It's a common kind tactic of, to Kind of like Blair Witch. Mm. Yeah. We'll talk about Blair Witch another day. Perhaps. I've seen that. Oh, we've all seen oh, it. Oh, yeah, we have all seen it. One of my What's, favourites. Well, there we go, me. so you might do it. Um, but, yeah, so after we've got that intro with the narration, <clears throat> all these, like, decomposed bodies, and that it was really early on in the film, I saw Nate just laughing and shaking his head when there was this, like, weird skeleton sitting on top of this gravestone with legs akimbo. There's something called gravity. Yeah. That would have just fallen off. It had, like, a pole going through it. jammed through it all. Did it? The pole, yeah, yeah it would come from like, yeah, yeah, right it, the way down the body. That's what they do. in the... Because you're distracted by the visuals and the sound of the cars, but it all talks about in the, a lot of the setup of the film, the backstory is in the radio. Radio broadcast. exposition, yeah. But you've got to be obviously aware of it and listening I, I to I was that. aware of it, but I wasn't paying attention yeah, to this... it because I've never seen the film. I was looking at what was going yeah, exactly. on. Exactly. Yeah. And I was, just, I was just sitting there thinking, well, how the hell is it sitting on that thing? Because it would just flop off. Yeah. I also thought it reminded me of a toffee <laughs> apple. <laughs> How toffee apples have you been eating? You just look caramelised. That's one way to describe it. Well, that's, that's why I was laughing at that point because I just thought, yeah, he looks caramelised, and how is he not falling off this this uh, monument, this grave? Poles. <laughs> Pole. I didn't see any poles. So. To, to be fair, like, you, like you, apart from that skeleton, the rest of the bodies and stuff, and you see the heads and all that, I think they look pretty good, especially for 1974. They looked pretty convincing. That's how I'd imagine a proper decomposing head to look. Is still, they? Yeah. Goopy Legrand. How about the armadillo? Did you enjoy that? That was a real armadillo that's they found in the road. Yeah. And they just thought, that's a good image, we'll use that. So that was just a real road kill they decided to film. I didn't have any thoughts about it. I just thought there's an upside down armadillo. <laughs> Is that when your stomach grumbled? Or? <laughs> no, my stomach All the way through this film. <laughs> my, stomach, my stomach rumbled through most of it. It was just digesting the big mouth. Big tuna. Yeah, yeah, the big tuna. Some of that barbecue that chap had in there. You're thinking, oh, I was thinking, oh, I'll have some of that. I'm going to do some people cute. Well, before, I didn't know it was people queue at the start, did I? Well, no, no. you don't. You don't. So that's a good bit of sausage. <laughs> uh, then you see uh, Franklin roll down the hill after he's trying to have a wee. I thought, well, why didn't he just have a whiz in the van and he could have said to people, look away while I was in this pot. Would you, want to, would, you want, look look would you want to be in the van with someone having a whiz in a pot? With the Texas heat. Have you, seen, boiling. have you seen Dumb and Dumber? <laughs> I have, yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> These have got more about them than Harry and Lloyd. Well, well, no, I just thought, yeah, he could have just done it in, yeah, in, rolling, in the pot. Rolling back so. a second, though. I found it interesting that I hadn't really picked up on before watching mm. the film. It was in the titles that it was actually the sun, wasn't it? And not sunspots and it, sun explosion on the sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the background, I thought it was um, yeah. something I never picked up on before. Would you say that again. There was some, there was some spots. Yeah, on the title sequence. Yeah. It was like the sun and like explosions on the sun and everything. And oh, okay. Yeah, those red lines, which which really fit. I never it's picked cool. that before. That's why it's good watching films like a few times, isn't it? So obviously we've seen it countless yeah. times. It was good. To, it's been a long time since I sat and watched it. In, in silence, yeah. and having to like sit and 
because usually if we get to go to watch yeah, a horror we'll, film, we'll 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 chatting well, and that's you know, the point. Yeah. That is quite good to that's sit down and see yeah. things and pick up things I hadn't picked on before. Well, that's the point we need to make. We actually sat down and watched this pretty much in silence. We weren't talking or anything because this was I a fingers on before. lips movie, wasn't it? It's fingers on lips. I hadn't seen it before, so I needed to make sure that I was paying attention. Oh well, since you mentioned it, it was something I was going to ask, so I might as well do it now. What is the relevance of keep showing shots of the sun? It was to, to highlight like the the oppression of the day because it's one of it's one of one of the hottest summers. It was like an intense blare in heat wasn't of, it? Like, in in recent history of the time, and it kept going to, to, to highlight like the oppression as everyone's just like they're hot and they're bothered and they're tired, and then all of a sudden they were under this horrible nightmare. You you could see like on and the actors it, the sweat like as soon as they get out of the van yeah. they were already sweating. That was like not that made was up. Really, and yeah. it's just that, it's, it's, it's to make you feel like oh. Well, when they were sun. filming it, was it the intention or was it just? No, it, it happened. Yeah. So is the, so they put it in afterwards when they realised. What well, they didn't go into it thinking they we, could, go, we have to film. In the no, no, yeah, no. they didn't go into it right, thinking it's going to be really hot and horrible. Yeah, yeah, they, expect, yeah, yeah. But they expected warm, but they didn't expect it to be like one of the hottest summers right. in recorded history. All right, so it, I was going to ask what was the significance yeah. of that. But it was originally meant to take two weeks to film it, but I think it took four weeks in total. And again, that was something to do with the heat, I'm guessing. But mm. there's one scene, or oh, we'll get to the scene later. But um, yes, yeah, so the first driving past the slaughterhouse where old uh, Grondins used to work. Oh, when they were driving <laughs> past the slaughterhouse, all I kept thinking of was American Gods. Really? Oh, okay, yeah, fair because enough. Chernobog? Yeah. I'm not going to say anything, I just kept thinking Chernobog. American Gods, well, I've only read the book, but... Um, Chernobog. There's, there's one thing that, um, I think it's Franklin that says it when they're driving past the slaughterhouse, when they says uh, they have to bash the head in with a hammer to kill the animals. Yeah. It takes a, f- a few good bashes. That's why I thought of Chernobog. It's just a bit of a... But then it's, it's foreshadowing at the end of the film exactly, with the grandpa, yeah. isn't it? Well, well, it is, but obviously I didn't know that at the exactly. time. That's why yeah. I, 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 that's no, why I not seen it. Having not seen American Gods, I have no idea what you're talking about. No, well, you, you, you wouldn't. As far as I know, Turner Box is the boss in Kingdom Hearts. Night on Bald Mountain. Yeah, but Addy Pops and you with the kitty and then he goes, yeah. Well, you've got that, but at the same time, you've still got Sally saying you shouldn't kill animals for food. Because there are a few people who say there's like a pro vegetarian message no, the, the, throughout this yeah, film. Yeah, it's, it's a very, very pro veggie film. Well, I didn't think that when I was watching it. A lot of people did. You not think, oh, I'll have a salad after that. <laughs> no. <laughs> just thought, just I, I actually thought them young. sausages looked lovely. <laughs> but then you realised what was in that. Well, they look lovely. <laughs> yeah. No, no, what I've said is technically true. They do look lovely. So if you, if you offered a bit of Franklin sausage, yeah, but I didn't know about that, did I? <laughs> If, I just, if you didn't tell me, if you just said, yeah. here, here's a Savaloy, it looks like this, so <laughs> I'd, say, I'd say, give it here, I'll have it. I'll pass the crunch on that. In. Yeah. But no, he ain't got the sausage yet. It's, um, first you see the hitchhiker. What do you think about him? Well, it's before they picked up the hitchhiker, actually. I was thinking, I hope she gets chainsawed first. Which one? The astrology woman. Oh, um, Pam. Yeah. yeah. I just thought, I, I oh, thought man, you this, would. I was like, oh, this is just stupid. What's she reading this nonsense for? I, 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 thi- I think I literally wrote down in and here, Nate doesn't like astrology. It's hippies, isn't it? 70s. And what's the difference between astrology and American astrology? Because she was reading American astrology magazine. They spelled colour with a, without, without the U. U. <laughs> and they got trash cans. <laughs> what, say they, oh, <laughs> what did you say? I missed it. <laughs> they spelled colour without a U. That's what oh, it yeah, well. is. <laughs> and, and they have aluminum. Aluminum foil. Yeah, well, there's lots of differences in the pronunciation of words go. and the spelling. They use Z's instead of S's. Which to make it more accessible to the American audience, American astrology. Exactly, they can relate to astrology, it. astrology, which is more esoteric and wide open. But if you make an American, like, is the hanging cheeseburger. Exactly. If you're listening, America. We like your cheeseburgers. <laughs> we do. We like a bit of that, don't we? Yes, we do. Oh, Ainsley. Do <laughs> um, you reckon Ainsley Eric could have had a starring role in this film? What is Leatherface? <laughs> well, they needed a good cook, didn't they? Be like, oh, <laughs> let's rattle those chainsaws. Yes, but no, they can't see what you just did. No, they can't. <laughs> so you could have just I went, I went, oh, I made my arms in the air. <laughs> my left arm straight up and my right arm kind of like a diagonal down angle. I wish and then you could see both. <laughs> Mate, makes it like a weird elf. <laughs> well, from, from the minute they picked up the hitchhiker, did you know he was a bit evil? Well, clearly. Yeah. But I, I was actually thinking, man, I forgot the um, actor's name. That, is his name Franco something? Him who plays Harry James Oswald. Franco. That's him, James Franco. Oh, I think that he, he, looks, does, he does look like James I, Franco. All I thought is like, that's a gangly James Franco. <laughs> it's a, it's a <laughs> gangly Franco. Edwin Neal is the chap who plays him. I'm sure he's been in some other horror films, but I can't think what. That's, the, that's all mm. I was thinking. Well, it wasn't all I was thinking, but I thought, he's a gangly James Franco. I like him as, as a character. I think he's pretty cool. I was going to say, like, George Osborne, but it's Harry Osborne, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> George, <laughs> it's like George Osborne, the politician. Exactly. Just walks out with a red briefcase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It is Harry Osborne he plays, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. remember what his dad's called. Norman, Norman that's Norman. it. Yeah, so Norman. James Franco. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think he does. He's got a bit of the Franco about him. Don't you think he seems quite friendly to start with, though? Like no, he's, he's jumping up and down like a lunatic. Not yeah, He starts off just sitting there and then. <clears throat> okay, no, when the guy starts, starts off and he's sitting there g- gurning at him. Yeah, he's gurning a little bit. Well, he's had his uh, troubles. I, I was just thinking, at this point, I was thinking, well, you deserve what's coming to you. What for picking him up? Well, you've already been reading an astrology. That'll teach you. <laughs> That'll get teach you. And now you just picked up a random hitchhiker. That's the moral of the story. Don't pick up hitchhikers. Forget pro vegetarianism. <laughs> That's the moral. Don't pick <laughs> that, up that, crazy pro vegetarian oh, anti hitchhiking. Was, was that a birthmark on his face? Yeah, it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But um, I, I thought he seems not, okay. Maybe not friendly. That's the wrong term. But well, who are you hanging out do, with? Well, <laughs> would you pick him up? Don't ask me questions you don't want to know the answers to. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd drive straight past him if he jumped in the road, possibly eat him. <laughs> Um, no, I think he seemed all right. It was only okay. He cut his hand. That was a bit he weird. Seemed all right. Oh. It was a bit weird. But I think See, with his animal pouch around his neck, <laughs> his big sack of goo. It doesn't matter what he's and got. And his 1920s photograph. He looks a good lad. And this razor in his socks. Yeah. He's had a hard day at work. But then I think well, the okay. Back, the backstory going into it slightly is that the slaughterhouse is shut down. Yeah, so they're all out of work. And they right? all worked in the slaughterhouse by the the one chap who worked in the gas station. And oh, they've oh. resorted to cannibalism, basically. Oh, to they all worked in the slaughterhouse? Yeah, yeah they all, apart, apart from old man. Apart from, well, yeah, uh, the old man, but he's just the chef. Yeah. All right, but, okay. But, see, the thing is, when uh, when I'm saying he's friendly, I think it's up until he takes the picture and then Franklin's like, I don't want their picture. No, well, no, no, no. He, he's cutting himself. He's, he's already cutting, but he hasn't cut anyone else yet. He hasn't yeah, cut Franklin. Yeah, he's so, in the car with someone and they start going, ah, and cutting their hand open and, and start laughing. Okay, but, Wouldn't you kick him out of the car? Yeah, point? okay, I'd kick him out. But my point is, if Franklin bought that picture, I think he still would have killed him and done all that, but I think that pushed him over the edge. He thought, now nah, you're all going to die now. But he's like, I'm but not no, no, but no, he, he's, he doesn't get involved in it until way later after all the massacres. So it's him doing that has got nothing to do. Oh, with but it, it has. Nothing, it has. Surely it hasn't I because that. Oh, well, correct me if I'm wrong, but surely his intention all along is to act as a hitchhiker because then he wanted them to that, drop him off near exactly, the house. That's, that's the only thing. Yeah. He so is. regardless. That his intention all along was to lure him and to then, get he, yeah, massacred. But, but, him, but him being kicked out doesn't. Doesn't like. Um, Push the events further. Yeah, exactly. 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 That's what I'm trying to say. Exactly. It does in the sense that, well, okay, he had to cut his hand and then he marks the van when he gets kicked out. He marks it they can, so they can see which van the people are in. That's why he rubs his hand yeah, across well, it. I, I disagree. That doesn't, I disagree. That, doesn't make, that doesn't make any sense, though. So he's marked the van. So what, he's counting on them going to the petrol station. Well, he's already going to take them that way but anyway. Leatherface like, like, never way. saw the van. See, I know that's the, like my, my uh, argument there is jumping ahead with this mm. again is that le- the, he says to me you left your brother alone again and what it is, is and once he kills the third person he stops on the other so what he's done he's, he's reacting to intruders on his property he's killing them yeah yeah and then and afterwards he realised he's in almost that he's done wrong to a point and he's like he's more scared he's thinking oh god they're gonna his dad or whoever his relationship is gonna go mad when he gets yeah. back see that, that's that's, that's the way I, I, I looked at when, it when I looked at it <clears throat> I thought oh the when I was watching it at the time, I did think, oh, yeah, he's marking it. But then it doesn't make any sense when you look at it yeah, retrospectively. Yeah, retrospectively, yeah, there is yeah, no, he thinks so he's no he thinks, carnival. Yeah. He's just a lunatic wiping his hands up. The, <laughs> he's a bit of a... He, does, make, he does make a symbol, but he could be a thoroughbred because he spotted her reading the astrology book, so he could just be messing with it because he may know it's, oh, it's a stretch. Possibly, but, but yeah, she, she doesn't react to it. The only person who reacts to it is Franklin, isn't it? I think that is a bit of a stretch considering, let's say, his mental capacity isn't really all up there. Yeah. One would assume... Mm. I mean, I haven't seen his IQ tests, or the scores. But exactly. I think we could take. Like, well, actually, I can't assume, can I? We could take. To be fair, oh, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> but then, yeah, so they, they do end up at the gas station, and uh, we see the two. We see the old man, and uh, that ginger chap who's cleaning the car. Who we never see again. No, he's so, eating on it. Hold on, the, we don't see an old man. We just that, see... that, that, that's what he's named as in the cast. You know, the, the, the patriarch of the family, basically, not the granddad, but. <laughs> Oh, I, thought the, the about, I thought you were talking about grandpa. No, he, in, in the credits, he's just billed as a old leather man. Leather face is <laughs> well, so, so why is Franklin asking about the old Franklin house? Because that's where their family lived. But that's the only. Well, that's the thing. Why is he asking about it though? Saying, do you know where it is? Because that, it's not their intention to go there, is it? Yeah, that's what. Yeah, the, the original plan. They go. They originally go to to the um, to to back to where they came from because um, their granddad was buried in the area, yeah. and yeah. then they're worried that he's been desecrated with all the news reports. Yeah, yeah. Grave robbers, well, which but... is arguably is that a. Uh, Trap to lure people to the area to kill. I, I think it is because oh, yeah. late, later on in the film, um, when exactly. well, when old man speaks to the hitchhiker and he's like, no, "I told you not to hang around that graveyard. They're going to get on to you." Well, clearly, yeah. then, if that is their intention, they do have some bit of intelligence. 
Mm. See that? That's the thing. That's, he, took, yeah. he took a wily intelligence, isn't it? Oh yeah. And then, but going back to what you were saying about the um, Franklin Frank houses, you got to think if they've not been there for years and years and years, and the dirt track. They, if you think about it, they've never travelled there themselves. They've been taken there as kids. So yeah. it's a different thing to travel there by yourself to be taken there. But so, and they're just trying to so find the directions af- after the grave thing. So once they've established about the. You know the situation with the grandpa. Graves Where were they going? They were going to the grandpa's house, the old Franklin house, just to just to reminisce. Go, you know, they thought okay. they'd travel down. The oh, street. Sorry, I missed that bit. So they were going there anyway. They didn't go there because they run out of gas and it was nearby. No, I think they, they, they wanted, wanted more yeah. gas because they were going to but it was nearby and so they'd stop there anyway because it was nearby and they thought there might there might be someone nearby to give them more gas to get away. Hold on, but if you were saying they were going to the Franklin house anyway, they would have gone there regardless whether they'd run out of gas, petrol, or not. Well, they would have gone there regardless, but it's just that they ran out of petrol on the way. It's okay. just uh, unfortunate happens. <clears throat> I was going to say, yeah. The, the only thing that, like with that, is they call it the Franklin House, but Franklin's first name is Franklin, isn't it? So I'm guessing the family name no, is no, Franklin. No, 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 it could be like a... Like, it, was, it was never established, is it? it? Never established well, it's, I think it's just because his sister calls him Franklin as well. So I've got people who call me by my surname all the time. Yeah, and I know like, people... What, Wood. Yeah. <laughs> I know a certain person who was on my stag do whose wife calls him by his surname. I yeah. know exactly who you're well, exactly. about. Exactly, so it's not a, oh, it's not a stretch, is it? One, one of my friends, I always call them by um, yes, you one do. or two names. It's like, you, know. <laughs> you do? Oh. Hello. <laughs> Hello, you. Know you. Me, um. <laughs> um, yeah, so going back to that chap who's at the gas station with the, with the old man, that ginger chap, do you reckon he is part of this family or did he work at the... Well, his head or was he a bit of a red herring? His, he head looks... was, his head was a bit odd. Exactly, shape. that's what I think, so he's just a red herring. So just indicating of the area in general is a bit... He just seemed odd. a bit... Which, yeah. When you say area, why, why, why are we talking here? <laughs> in the local, in the local, the locality. In spitting distance. Well, some, well, I didn't catch what he said at one point. He says like you've covered the car in something, and I can't think what he said. I've, After he washed it, he goes, "You've covered the car in." I didn't. And I didn't that. catch what I was, said. So he, I wasn't paying often, that much attention yeah. to that. See, the, and it was at this point, like obviously I've seen it a few times. When you started but... scribbling pictures in your book again. <laughs> yeah. Also, as well, before if you're moving on, I just want to ask something before that. So he asked where the old Franklin house is. And then he's saying, oh, you don't want to go there. But then he changes his mind when he says, that, oh, it's my dad's place. Why? Well, I think he was never a fan of the killing. Yeah. yeah so what I'm thinking is like he's, trying to, he's trying to keep them out there because he doesn't want them to get them killed to a point. I think later on the killing is a necessity because everything ha- in his mind is a necessity. But he's trying to want And then it's like, it's the family thing. He's like, oh, your family are nearby, so you're kind of one of us. Right, okay. Yeah, so it yeah, could so be like he's accepting the same. Oh, we live there. So, oh, oh, okay, then. Well, you're, you're kind because of like Because especially this. if the, the Franklin family, if they were working at the sort of house exactly. and everything. And, and, exactly. Fair and if they were like high ups, they could have been employed by the Franklin family. Exactly. Fair enough. That makes sense. Or on the other flip side, he invites them out because they're related to him. They want revenge because they lost they their could, They could have laid them it, off, That yeah. could go either way. That's just pure supposition. Really open. Like well, yeah, um, I think it was, it was at this point, like, as a character, I really don't like Franklin. I find him so annoying. He really he does stayed my head in, in character through the entire film, which is why Gunnar Hansen, who played Leatherface, hated him in real life, and then didn't realise because he's a method actor. Mm. He was just start keeping the character going, and they became great friends until he passed away. Years, years. Gunnar was Hansen. What was the whole ordeal? Is the ordeal? What was the whole <laughs> deal with? After the hitchhiker goes out, Franklin starts like, oh, yeah, that cutting of the hand looks like a bit of all right. I, th- I didn't think you were saying it was all right. You're saying what kind of nutter, for lack of a better term, does it mm. take to be able to cut his own hand? He's saying it's so yeah, hard but then to start, get Then he seemed to get like interested in it. Yeah, well, maybe. could it be, thinking about it, though, because Franklin is, is you know, he's in the wheelchair, he's a bit of an oddball cat. Is he like bridging the gap between the extreme on the hillbilly side and then the, the arguable normality, normality yeah. of the... The teen, so he's like he's he's like the bridge between the two. So that's why he's got the more in there. Like, uh, but he's he's got a bit of the touch about him. He's got a little. Why, do you, need, why do you need a bridge? You don't need why one, not? but I think it's just a you nice. Need one. It's just that, it, it creates it could a connection be between the two. It's just like a little narrative thing, like when he's blowing his tongue out at, repeatedly. See that, like, I, I think you're meant to feel sorry for him, and I want to feel sorry for him in some parts, but he's just too annoying. He's that much of an irritating character. I'm like, you know, what? I don't care if your friends and your sister are leaving you. I don't care if you're probably going to die later on in this film. <laughs> I didn't like the spiders, though. Move on to that when we get to the spider bit. Yeah, this spider bit. <laughs> it was at this spider point bit. where Franklin was eating the sausage. Is this where his stomach started rumbling? 
I can't. I don't know when my stomach started <laughs> rumbling. It wasn't rumbling out. It was rumbling on and off for a while. It wasn't rumbling out of hunger. It was rumbling because it was digesting the big tea I had. <laughs> Just that. The, the thing with the sausage that honestly started to make me laugh is when Franklin gets out of the van. He's there, it's like looking at the blood, and he's got the sausage in his mouth, just like a cigar. cigar. It's yeah. like a fat Columbo. Well, one more thing, man. Watch this blood on the side of the van. Well, I just thought it looks like he's smoking a sausage. He's just, I think it was a good visual. And he, he wasted, he spat it out later. Disgusting waste of a sausage. You've got, you know, someone's died for that sausage. You've got to finish it. Well, he didn't know that. Well, well he knew something had died yeah, for it. Yeah, but not some one. No. But yeah, it's that, that anti-meat message again, you see. Which I didn't pick up on at all. So I, I didn't do a very good job if that was the intention. <laughs> well, you're eating a steak as we talk, so. <laughs> Say, saying that, is Toby Hooper a vegetarian? Because I'm not I sure. I don't know. If you're listening, Toby, is Toby Hooper still alive? He, no, he's dead. If you're listening, Toby Hooper, <laughs> you are a vegetarian. Why? I'd like to hear your reasons. Send us a message. But yeah, so they arrive at the Franklin House after that. The big old house. Did, a dilapidated house. Yeah. What did you think of the house? Bit of a fixer-upper. When I saw the spiders, I thought, why the hell are they clicking? But then I realised it was just background sound effects. It wasn't supposed yeah. to... Spiders don't go clicking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> click, 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 click. Exactly. Spider imagine click. imagine that Spider in the middle of the night. You click, 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 click. There's thought, another spider thought, in the room. But I thought, why have they done this? They showed you loads of spiders. Why are they saying they make clicking noises? But then I realised they used the sound effect for something else well, afterwards. Most of it, if you notice, there was no proper music in the whole of the film. Apart from a couple of things on the radio. Was, that, was yeah, it. that was the radio. But like, soundtrack-wise, mm. it's all weird noises. And I go... It's meant to be stuff you'd hear out in the sticks, weird, isn't it? Weird, weird so, sounds. So, we got to the Franklin House. And it was their intention just to reminisce about old times. Yeah, yeah, yeah go to the swimming they? hall, do all that. Go to, go to the old water hall. <laughs> but then leave, leave Franklin by the van as he struggles to get in. At that point, I felt sorry for him a little bit as he was struggling to get into the house. Because they were all having a lovely laugh outside, a laugh in the house, and he just yeah. stares. At that point, I felt sorry for him a little bit, and then he started annoying me again, so I thought, you know what, stay out there. And was it at this point where I, where I made this up? That they had <laughs> <laughs> were you making your own film? <laughs> <laughs> Mind wondered. They had those little dream catcher bone things in the Franklin yeah, house. Yeah, that's what yeah. that's what freaked him out because he realised yeah. there's some been some there's someone being there and doing things. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like zooming in on them. Yeah. yeah, that definitely wasn't there when old Grondin's Franklin lived there. But yeah, as well as that though, when they start <laughs> to go out and walk down to the waterhole, and she picks up on the killing the clocks and hanging them on trees. Yeah, why do they hate clocks? Maybe they don't. I hate them, it's just there for them to tell the time. No, yeah, no, but they've they stabbed them. Because they don't want time to go forward on the outside of a job, so by destroying the top of the clock so they can remain in their mind in the past. Is time. that just your theory? No. <laughs> that's that's pretty... Like, yeah, I can see it, but I don't think that was ever the intention. I think it was just, we're going to destroy stuff and hang it around so we look like nutters. Toby Hooper's not here to confirm, though, so I think it's as valid as Well, you'll have to watch it again and see if there's any other clocks anywhere, like in the barbecue shop. You don't shop see or... any clocks anywhere else. Because you know? they've stabbed them all. Exactly, because they want time to stand still where they're, where they're, they've got a safe haven, as it were. <sighs> I think it's a bit of I a think, stretch. So do I. <laughs> when I say bit, I mean it's a man- <laughs> stretch Armstrong is what it is. <laughs> but then your Peter Pan theory. <laughs> I haven't got, oh, yes. The Peter Pan theory <laughs> is that the, the real patriarch of the entire Sawyer family, that's, that's like Leatherface and all them, mate, that surname's Sawyer. Yeah. But they, they don't mention it in this, but later on they confirm it as Sawyer. It's Hook. Hook, give us the hook. <laughs> Fair enough, would you like to elaborate? Well, yeah, you don't like clocks. Okay. And that's the end of it. All right. And then the, uh, yeah, you started laughing shortly after this. So, um, what's his name? Disco Jerry and Pam find the generator. And then, like, he's looking, like, he sees the cars and all that. He's, like, looking, like, through this little... Yeah, I did hear a chuckle. Like, this little net thing, looking through the cars, and you just started laughing to yourself. Oh, cars. After <laughs> Disco Jerry finds uh... the generator. <laughs> Disco Joey finds a generator. <laughs> that would be a good film. It's a good book. If he kids finds book the I can't remember why that would have been. It's like it's shortly before they actually go into the Sawyer house. Yeah, they just find all those cars and the generator. You started really chuckling to yourself. And he was, he was like, hey, hey, the, which I thought was stupid because you can't hear anything over the generator anyway. Yeah. I honestly can't remember why I would have been laughing at that point. There's a, there's other points where I laugh which I can remember mm. why, but I can't remember <laughs> at that point. Well, going around the generator. We'll never know. If I remember it, I'll... Uh, we'll come back to it. Yeah. But yeah, then uh, they finally get to the Sawyer house, old Disco Jerry and Pam, and they find a tooth. Yes. A big old tooth. Is it a human tooth, we reckon? Because it looked oh, massive. I expect it's a human and it, da- it looks massive, though. Well, there was, wasn't there a filling on it, which was the silvery stuff on it? Oh, I thought it was, that was just like a bit of like, mould or plaque or something. I thought it was, I thought it was um, a filling. It could have been. I thought it just looked too big to be human, but again, I don't know, it could have been a, a big chap. And so you think, so I know I'm going to put it into old astrology persons and... Pam, for a laugh. Yeah. 
Yeah, and then just after that, we meet your mate. We meet my mate. Big leather mate. Big leather mate. What did you think of him? I see his introduction. Yeah, as soon as you see him kill someone. And go... I thought the spasming on the floor was a bit much. It's like it wouldn't look like that. I don't know. If you get smacked like that, it could just cause like, I don't if know, you like didn't, a cancerism or something. Kill someone Not and he's getting brain anyway. damage. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did think it, it was a bit later on. It's like, yeah, so he's clearly a lunatic. He's wearing a leather face. Oh, sorry, Alan, just to go back. This isn't Disco Jerry. This was Kirk. I made a mistake. Yep. I was going to say, Jerry's the driver, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. This, this was Kirk who got Kirky. Kirky got killed. Yeah, I'm just trying to think why I was laughing then at the generator bit outside. But the what thing, else happened at that point? Nothing. Nothing. Literally, nothing, nothing, nothing was happening. Nothing happening. They were walking to the house. Bunch of cars. And then I'm, like, I must have been thinking. I must have been thinking about something else then. But yeah, like again, like what you said earlier, Hollywood with um, they break into the soy house. They literally do just break in, and that's when Leatherface kills them. It it's just, like you've come into my it's house. A, it's an, it's a, it, and um, the guy, the the. The petrol station the man does warn you. Says you don't want to go wandering around people's houses because they won't take kindly to it, and they'll show you. Exactly. Yeah, and well, I, I was thinking at this point, well, you're deserving it. You're just going into someone's house. That's you're it. trespassing on their property, going inside the house. This one is in, and the guy's obviously got issues as well. So his natural yeah. action is he's a big lad with an armor. So his natural action is going to be bosh your head in. Speaking of that, with him having issues, I think like, it's pretty cool. You probably already know this Hollywood, but just for Nate um, Gunnar Hansen, who plays Leatherface, like he wanted to really try and develop the character as, as he saw fit and Toby Hooper said yeah you can, you can do whatever you want with him so he started going to like schools for people who are like um, like mentally handicapped and have learning difficulties things like that and he was trying to copy how they try and speak and walk and communicate with each other without making it offensive so he tried to get that balance of communicating what he wants without just coming across as being like oh yeah I'm, I've got all these problems no, rare, rare. Actually, on the script it did just have grunts and squeaks for Leatherface, but next to it, it indicated what he was trying to say for yeah. Gunnar Hansen, well, so he knew. I never picked up on what he was trying to say. I just thought he well, was. Well, no, you It was. For, it was for Gunnar. It was the guy playing him just to try and get into the character. I was like, this is what Leatherface is trying to do and say to the people around him at the time. But then, like a lot of people who do have learning difficulties or mentally impaired, they've come out and said, "What a good job he's done." They said we didn't find it offensive. They says, "Yeah, it's quite accurate." And they were happy with it, so he was really happy with his performance for that. I was thinking, so he's wearing this leather face. He's got, <laughs> That's why they he's, call him. And he's got, there's blood everywhere, bones everywhere, but he wants to wear an apron to keep his Sunday best. That's well, he, he's the butcher. He's the, he worked in the abattoir, so he's just yeah, keeping I, that going. I, that that makes sense now, but I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah. Again, it's his role in the family, isn't where, it? When is it established that's where they worked? Or did I miss that? I can't remember when they, they mentioned talk, it. They talk about it, and they're sort of like, you know, um, he, he, the guy, he says it in the... Um, the hitchhiker says it when they in the vices member that my brother yes. works in the abattoir. Yes, he does. Okay, probably. Yeah, he, 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 he does a killing. Of the cheese, brain brother. cheese, head cheese, head cheese, which was the working work. title for the film. Yeah, when they so were head cheese. Killing. He's talking about that. That's what Leatherface would do. Okay. <laughs> and then after that, I can't remember why I wrote it down, but after that, I've just got chicken in a cage. Because <laughs> she, because after <laughs> I think she, I quite she, she trips into the room and looking for Kirk. Yeah, Kirk and, and then Kirk, 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 lad. <laughs> and um, she then she sees the chicken in the cage and she's just gets mad. Chicken cage? No. Oh, no! I was thinking at this point. I don't know if it was just the, the, the camera showing everything. I was like, why are you just lying on the floor looking at everything? Get up and get out I think right now. It's easy to say though. She was throwing up and she was panicking and she was heaving. I yeah. think it was just where I was like, like, looking, looking at everything. I was like, no, just get up and go. In the room as well because it, it, it ties in with the, the whole summer thing is because they're taking bones from a nearby abattoir and scattered them everywhere and the heat was intense. It's barbaric, but it was their home. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so it, was making, done there. Yeah, it was making everyone look puke in real life. There's the staff members um, filmed for a bit, and that's when I decided to be sick. So yeah. some of the some of the reaction to it is just like it's it's just a reaction. reaction. The, 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 the joy heaving is the smell of the room and all the bones and everything. Going why there. are the bones everywhere? If they're doing it for the mate, why are they keeping the bones? Because just the Ed Gein inspiration is next. They yeah, can do furniture it's, it's, out yeah. of it, and, and to show that they then you know the. The, the dad said, they, are they not house powered? Obviously not. Not at all. But it, it, I think it's the hitchhiker who makes all the well, weird bones gum. of. Because yeah. you think oh, oh, the, the pouch he wears yeah, yeah, is yeah, obviously yeah. homemade, so I think it's him just yeah. making stuff and leaving it. I did, I did think at this point as well, I was like, how on earth is Leatherface of. Leatherface affording this lovely property on the outside, <laughs> yeah. but then it, then I understood <laughs> oh, the when, they, when I realised they, they, they were all the family. Then you went inside. Thought actually, no, the, the property you, value was plummeted. Plummeted. I said. Would you move your family in there? 
Well, obviously not. What a what? stupid question. <laughs> well, actually, though, I was thinking, can I get a house like this? <laughs> exactly. That's not what I was thinking See, when I was watching this film. Uh, you've played Resi 7, haven't you? Well, I was going to say, I, well, I was gonna say I later on. It's massive. at this point, as well, you start to go around the house, you no, see... No, no, it was the, the, the bit that I thought that the most is when they're around the table. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get, we'll get on to that later. I was, I, like, I was like, that's definitely Resident Evil 7. Even when they're just walking around the house. in a house like this. Even when they're just walking around. Hello, Lloyd Grossman. Hi. I'm Lloyd Grossman. Buy my sauce. Do you still do that sauce? Yes. We digress. Yes. But yeah, after that, you see arguably one of the most iconic scenes from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, where... Um, Hanging on a hook. Just before that, as Pam's trying to run out, Leatherface comes and bear rugs her and drags her back in. I she's panicking. Agree, the most iconic bit is the, op- is the opening scene. When, the first, when he opens the door, and you see, bap, in, done. I done. think the bear hug and the drag back no, in. No, no, I think the bap Why is that hug. iconic? I don't know, it's, it just tends to be used in a lot of things, a lot of people seem to like it. I love it, personally. No, I know what you mean, but I, see, I still think, iconically, <laughs> just the bap. <laughs> open door and bop. Open door, <laughs> bop, down, in, door shut. Straight in there the meat freezer. Because... Uh, to admit it, it is quite an odd, slow end start. It's a long time before yeah. anything yeah. of note really happens. You get the hitchhike, which is a bit weird, but then after that, it's just, just fanning yeah. around, isn't it? Having I mean, a laugh. But then the second the water, you know, the second you see Leatherface, kills start. Yeah, the second you see him. So they got they've gone to that house to get some like petrol to see if they've got any. They're gonna How far it. away is that from the Franklin house then? It's not, not that far. far. If, if you see that it's it's really, it's really an easy walking distance. But clearly because yeah, they walk there. You've just got to walk between yeah. the two <laughs> sheds, go down to the water and all. And it's down there. You can you can like see the Sawyer house from um yeah. from I call it Grondins then. From the Franklin <laughs> house can't you? Like it shows you the top of the house. It'd be like here to the, the pub down the road. Okay. <laughs> from it, yeah, I know the pub you're on about. It's about it, it ain't open anymore, but so the Sawyers would have knew the Franklins then. Yeah, it, good it's, it's heavily implied that they would have known them. So, so yeah, so that man was just trying to warn them then. Well, he was. He was. Said, he's got no stomach for killing, so yeah. he didn't want that. He didn't want that asshole. But yeah, with that bit with Leatherface, we just put her on the meat hook. Apparently, that was a horrible film to see because the, the way they horrible did it. Film horrible film to see. Film to see. <laughs> horrible <laughs> scene to film. Ooh, a horrible scene to film. The harness went wrong when she put up when they put her on the hook, so her screams are real. The, the, she was in so much pain. The harness had to go between her legs, and it was just a thin wire. And then they said, like, to, to give her cushions, they just gave her like a few sanitary towels. And they said it wasn't working, so and, she was just screaming and then, out. And, in and pain. then basically, body weight stepped in, and that was it. Then yeah, it was game over. Right, okay. And that, that scene was cut out like in a lot of countries when the film was released. Like It's been heavily edited loads of times and people didn't get yeah. the uncut version for like 20 odd years, didn't they? But yeah, that, that scene in particular, that I was mean, cut th- out. I mean, this was slightly <laughs> more gory than I remember it being, so I think that's the oh, I don't think version. it was gory. No, well, but you've never seen the, the original cut. It's, 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 it's well, oddly enough, it, considering it's a massacre, it's very, very bloodless. Yeah, because you don't really so. see much. Toby Hooper yeah. wanted this to be a PG. PG thirteen. So he, he tried to keep all the blood to a minimum. He tried to have all the horror off screen. Why did he want it to appeal yeah. to children as well? No, no, he wanted it to have a massive appeal, not yeah. to kids, but to get more people to watch it. Then at first it was given an X rating, which is like the worst. You which get is in like a death knell in America. That is, no one wants an X rating. Then they dropped it down to R eventually, but if you're afraid, it was X rated. They still do X ratings. I believe they do, but. I'd no, imagine films, it's, it's, it's MA17 now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but what about films like that. August Underground Mortem and stuff like that? Surely that's I think X-ray that's films. R21. Do you reckon? I think uh, it could be. I don't, I don't know. I don't know to how speed they, with the American... They're like the fake stuff films and stuff like that. No, but I mean, I don't know how the American like, film... Yeah, I'm not 100% were. myself. Anyway, what was the next bit you've got in your little notebook of <laughs> tricks? Of dreams. Yeah, so that's when you first see the face using his chainsaw and cutting up Kirk in it. Well, you don't see him cutting up. Curtains. See, and that's another thing. You, you hard. The only time you see his chainsaw hit flesh is much later on. Yeah, and it's he, himself. Yeah, when he does it to himself. Much later on, you never see chainsaw it's, it's actually hit flesh. It's what's not seen. No, nothing is scarier than the unseen. Mm. Which has influenced so many horror films after that. So I think Toby. In fact, where's War Dogs? He accidentally created something so iconic. Which I'd, he meant to make a good film, I think, but he wanted to make a. This, this is why I don't like the remakes. In the remakes, you do get this chainsaw going through everybody left, right, and centre, and faces being cut off. You do like I like them for different reasons. Like you know, I love my slasher films and stuff like I that, know, and I'm about I body know. counts. I know. So I can't help it. I do. I, obviously, I much prefer this, but you know, it was all right. It's not bad. The so remake. He drops a pack. Uh, drops a pack. Uh, and again, like this is when you see he is just a butcher. I, I don't know if you noted down there. I laughed around when. Just before he would have come out to Bear Hugger, or around the time he came out to Bear Hugger? No, what, what, I don't think so. Why because after the first bap on the head of Kirky, I was just... Ex- <laughs> of who? Of Kirky! 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 
You're was, dead, Kirky. Come was, back to me, Kirky. This Sorry. is what I was just thinking. I was thinking, oh, wouldn't it be funny if you just saw Timmy Mallet with Pinky Ponky back the next woman? <laughs> Timmy, Timmy Mallet and Mallet, Mallet, Mallet working bump. together. <laughs> Timmy Mallet with Pinky Ponky bapping her on the head. Mr. Mallet, Mr. Mallet, I need to go one. to the toilet. That's the one. So I, I laughed at that point. I never saw so much Timmy, Timmy Mallet. Mallet. <laughs> he was just before my time. Timmy he Mallet. Be, he yeah, but I used to have a Pinky Ponky. What was one of them? It's a mallet, so it's got a, a pink, yeah. pink, yellow and pink over the face. That's Pinky Ponky. I think I can vaguely remember Mr. it. Mr. Mallet, Mr. Mr. Mallet. Oh, yeah, I think that would have given the film a slightly different feel. But, but that's why I was thought in my head at that point, so I had a little chuckle. <laughs> that's fair enough. Everyone likes a little chuckle. But yeah, like it was this point showing that Leatherface really is just a butcher. He's got his apron on. All he wants to do is cut up the meat, give it to someone else to cook. It's what he knows how to do. It's all he's yeah, doing. You don't know that they're cooking it at this point. No, I think you can kind of guess if he's butchering people and you see like bodies in freezers and people on meat hooks. You don't see the freezer at that point? I think, okay, but the meat hooks, that's something you'd yeah, see in a butcher. Yeah, prior to that, you just see a load of dead animal bones and everything. So you do. You could, well, you could real animal bones as well. Human exactly. Skulls. Yeah, you do, but you're not necessarily for meat, so at that point you could just be thinking, oh, he's a lunatic that just likes killing. I, at I that point, I didn't think about meat. Did you not? No, I didn't think he was cutting up for meat at that point, no. Again, no, it's just quite is, with us, though, isn't it? So the, it's, the cannibalism yeah. thing didn't come into it at that point for me. I didn't think that that's what he was doing. Yeah, I think, well, he seemed like he's only killing out of necessity because he's just protecting his house, but... Sure, yeah, then it goes back to the van with Franklin who's lost his knife. But going back, you don't actually see him lose the knife. The last time you see it, he's just using it himself. No, he gives it to... He, g- he does, does he give, it give it away? He does give it, he does yeah, give yeah. it to Sally. Oh, OK. I can't to Brawler remember. Sally. Yeah, that was the thing. She does need a... Well, she doesn't need a bra, you know. She can do whatever she wants, but... Am I the one who didn't pick up on that at all? Yep. It, it, was, <laughs> it was distracting in some scenes. Oh. I paid no attention. I imagine it would be for Franklin. He was directly at tit height, wasn't he? Uh, <laughs> all the way through in his was wheelchair. Was his sister? Yeah, but not in real life, like the actor, isn't it? He must have been like, bloody Yeah, hell. but he's a method actor. So I'm quidzing. Quidzing. <laughs> That's why I don't want to give up my torch. <laughs> yeah. No, Sally, come here. Uh, they got to the torch. Oh, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> this bit, I don't know why this made me laugh so much. Just when they do go off looking for Kirk, um, and they just started oh. shouting, Kirk! Kirk! Walking through the woods. And then, just in my notes, I've just written down Star Trek 3, The Search for Kirk. Kirk. <laughs> yeah. the one thing, the first thing you do, you sound like going, Kirk! <laughs> yeah, but, so this is when Jerry's going looking for him, Jerry. not the rest of them, it's just Jerry going. Just Jerry. Yeah, Disco Jerry, he's gone looking for him. No and then, Ben. No Ben. No Ben, just Jerry. Hey, hey that's yeah. ice cream. Yeah, so. So, why has he gone looking for him? Just because they've been, the been ages. Because the they only said there'd be an hour. So he went by himself to go And they worked at the watering hole. Yeah, the, the one thing that bothered me when Jerry does get to the Sawyer house as well is how he knocks on the door. He uses his palm and slaps the door frame. Well, how would you do it? I'd use my knuckle and knock on the door like a normal person. Yeah, but person. It's, it's one of those um, mesh door things, isn't it? So yeah, there's still, there's still some wood on the actual door. No, no, the door he's bashing is the mesh door. I can't remember what happens to Jerry at this point. You have to <laughs> Don't worry, Disco Jerry. So he knocks on the door. He knocks on the door. He goes in as well because they're all just breaking an entrance. Yes, and then well, you, start, you started laughing. At this point, I've got night left when Disco Jerry walks into the Sawyer bone and meat room. So he started looking around, like where you first see Leatherface. He was walking through well, that room. I can't remember explicitly, but I've just been thinking. Well, it would be. I'm probably and laughing because he's just, he's just walking into this house and he's just not well, not well, concerned. He doesn't turn back to like call the police or something. Well, it's like what would you do though if they say t- tables? T- you're not going to tell, but you're washing your dishes. Then all of a sudden, Disco Joe comes in the house, going, "Kirk, Kirk, what would you do? Would you come out wailing at him? I wouldn't chainsaw him or sledgehammer him." <laughs> Well, that's why we are on different. I say, what are you doing? Get out of my house now! Kirk, Kirk. And if we just kept doing that, I'd just chin him and call the police. Well, but you don't like drag him into your like, butcher room when he's going. When you've after you chinned him, and he starts shaking on the floor. Which is at this point where we see the face just armour him again. That's all he's been doing. You don't really see any chains when apart from dead bodies at this point. He, he armours again. No, no, no. The the first, the no got, how about the bit when he opens? The, when he hears this, the squeaking from the fridge, though. That's oh yeah, he opens oh, yeah, the I was fridge. Say, so she's still alive. Yeah, you, you know, he is a. It's her basically in the throes of death. She's yeah. just dying slowly in the yeah. fridge. Her last dying sound. She's squeaking. Why? That's what she why didn't they kill her? No, well, he just he let her to bleed out. And if you leave in the freezer. Well, if you leave her on well, a meat hook. He leaves on the meat hook and then took her down and put her in the freezer to like, dive up them. Yeah. yeah. And bleed maybe, out. Maybe. Why just let her bleed out first and then put her in the freezer? Because he's looking after the meat, isn't he? Mate, he knows what he's doing with meat. It was his job, he's wasn't it? I'm not going to question him. He's treating them the same. I wondered like, well, why the hell is she still alive? I did wonder that. It's just she, that the hook didn't kill her. Yeah, and it was after this point, after... That's why she springs out of the 
freezer. No, no, but I mean, I, I was just thinking, why hasn't he killed her then put her in the freezer? Well, that, maybe because he's, he's, he's treating like the animals, and the animals would be dead, but people are different, maybe. Yeah, they're more durable or more something? Possibly. And so he thinks... What? what? So he's okay, durable. So, no, I get what you mean. Animals, so. animals are larger, so they would take depends, longer for them to okay, bleed it out. Depends. So, okay, so if you've got a pig, if you hammer a pig and put it on a hook, maybe, say, after 10 minutes, that pig's dead. Do it with a human, it might take 20 minutes. But in his head, it's just, no, hang me, it took 10 minutes, put meat in freezer. Maybe that's because yeah, if it's most pigs to do, you got, like, cows yeah, too massive. I yeah, but he's, he's manning it. I don't think. Well, actually, yeah, but apparently he was good at his job, wasn't he? He was a big chap, so he might have been able to put a cow on a hook like that. But I don't know. Maybe he just thought because of her size, she was. I don't assume she was dead. Yes, yeah. but there were also human skulls in there, so you would imply that it's not the first time that he's done it. But he's not the killer. He just butchers the meat that's already dead. Usually, actually, see, yeah, maybe he's not used to it. Maybe he's having a panic because all he these doesn't kill people. them. He does. He usually just butchers them. So I think usually the hitchhiker brings them back and kills them, or he finds dead bodies and they're already dead, and then Leatherface just cuts them up. He's the butcher. That's his job. He's not a killer. He only kills to protect his house. It's heavily Again, implied that's the only time he kills people to protect. It's heavily implied. Yeah. In just this film, not in subsequent ones. No, in subsequent ones, everything goes out the window. Completely. <coughs> in the prequel ones, it does go right into the heart. It starts with the the um, the avatar being shut down. Okay. And, and see, it goes from there. It was at this point you started shaking your head as well. Because I was probably thinking, why the hell is he walking around this house? This why is after he, just, he just got killed and he started shaking. That's, that's a horror film trope, that is. It's yeah. the whole, what are you doing? Get well, this, out this the This is house. where I was, I was probably shaking my head. I was like, well, you deserve this. You just Why are you coming into this house? You can see that it's a bit unsavoury. Just get out of there. You know your friends are missing. So you called for them. You can't hear anything. Don't search a random person's house. You trespass on the property. I'm assuming... Texas, America, if someone trespasses on your property, I'm assuming you can shoot them. <laughs> I'd, I'd have thought so, but... So, um, so, anything's fair game, and so I'm just thinking, what the hell are you doing? That would be why I was shaking my head at this point. I was like, this is just saft. Just get out of there. You just, is... Yeah. I get it, but it's horror film tropes, and it? you've got... It's a suspension yeah, of horror films. It's, th- this creates a lot of tropes. This and Halloween, and to yeah. an extent, um, Black Christmas created a few. Mm. But yeah, this, this is like a proto slasher film. Yeah, yeah, but that's what I, that's what I was just thinking. Yeah, that's like oh, girl stuff. Well, rod for your own back. Just like that skeleton had a rod in his back sitting on the gravestone. Which I didn't know. Exactly. That, to- that toffee apple. Old rod the skeleton. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Don't mind me, just rod the skeleton sitting on the gravestone. Um, but yeah, when we go back to Franklin and Sally, it was still at the van and it's gone like night completely black. The thing that really wound me up about this is that they left the van lights on, I'm guessing, like, all I... this time. Why is the battery not flat? <laughs> Well, I said, well, I didn't say it. <laughs> in, in my head, I was shaking my head at this point, as if you noticed it down. I yeah. thought the same thing. I was like, why on earth are you letting the battery drain? Exactly. You're in the middle of nowhere in Texas, in the middle of the summer. Your friends have gone missing. Let's drain See, the battery. Well, out then, you if might not have picked up on this whole well, because well, 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 you don't well, drive. But like, well, you're already out of, you're already out of petrol. And then you're going to destroy the battery. Drain the battery, yeah. Yeah. But it could be because Franklin's an idiot, and he wouldn't let Sally turn the lights off. There is that, but I thought she'd just go All against they were him. scared. And, and they didn't want to have the, the lights They're off. scared, but I'd just stay in the van if that was the case. Lock it. Yeah, it's the dark, but you're locked in the van. I'd be all right with that. And I'm sorry. Who would actually do the... I mean, no, not who would go and look for their friends. Because <laughs> people would. It's now night time. You haven't heard from them for a- ages. You're like, I'm going to go off by myself. Into the woods. Into the at woods. At that point, I was on Franklin's night. side. On it. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. why, why are you going off there? Yeah. Listen to Franklin. We need to go back to town and get help. Exactly. Do that, don't a voice of reason. Don't Franklin the voice for, for of reason. Once, don't bug off happened. into the bloody... And, and she took the keys. Or, or Jerry yeah, got the, the key. keys. The, Jerry got the, the, the key. There were question if you had them. There was like, did Jerry take the keys? How were the lights still on there? Exactly. That's, that was why I didn't know how those 70s camper vans work. <laughs> Surely the lights wouldn't stay on if the keys aren't in the ignition. It could be the camper van thing, you never know. Oh, to be fair, it probably is. It's only, I say recently, that they've had a feature where if you turn the engine off, your lights will go off as well. Whereas before, they could stay on. No, I mean, they? but you have to have. Yeah, the lights can stay Actually, on. Yeah, so that key. would mean Jerry would have had the full beams on in the middle of the day and then turned the engine off, left the full beams on. Yeah, so that, that doesn't make sense at all. So. Toby Hooper, don't do that again. That's taking a point off it. Because <laughs> we're watching. I did think that, that the light thing did annoy me. And then I was just thinking, oh, you silly woman, why are you going off into the woods by yourself? You haven't heard from your friends, you're assuming something's wrong. Yes, okay, so just why don't you call the police? And even worse, yeah, but you say call the off. police, man, they ain't got mobile phones or anything, have they? But even no, worse, she was going to go stalking off in the night without, without a light. Without a torch, yeah. <laughs> Sure, so I, I, I that's going to make things even better. I'm just going to stall for the pitch black Texan backwaters. I don't need a torch. I don't need a bra. I can do whatever I want. I'm unstoppable. Yeah. But I like this when Sally does start walking off and Franklin's shouting after her just because it reminded me of Rocky calling for Paulie. 
It was just like it after he was shouting for was Sally. Just like it. <laughs> yeah, oh, for a minute. Oh, was, I never for a minute you thought you were watching Rocky. Yeah, I just dozed off. I woke up. How was he shouting now? Do Because I can't remember. Sally! Sally! Boy. Father can't mine! He was just like it. Um, yeah, okay, we, the up. film's blurred. We didn't know whether watching Rocky <laughs> or the Texas Chainsaw Rocky. It is the same film, pretty much, if you read between the lines. But then after that, we get our first proper jump scare. It's not effective as a jump scare, especially watching it in this environment. Scares, when um, when the face comes out of nowhere and chainsaws face. Oh, yeah, I do remember that. It didn't make me jump, but... Yeah, it's not like it won't do because we're not watching it on like a massive screen or anything, and it's. We're all so together, I'm assuming then he heard the screams. Well, he'd heard from the, the camp. He was honking the camp. Exactly, camp, wasn't so he'd heard the. Yeah, the screams. So, he, the so he came out to see what was going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then what annoyed me at this point. <laughs> Go on. Why on earth did he keep revving the chainsaw? Because this genuinely is because Gunnar Hansen's already six foot four, he's a big chap, and then they gave him raises in his boots as well. They thought it'll make him bigger and it should make him slower chasing. He was chasing Sally through the trees, but he kept catching up to us. So he had to keep revving his chainsaw and cutting down trees and branches just to give him something to do. Otherwise he was right behind her. Because if she was trying to get away from him and you, and there are bits that you see, she's running and you can't see him behind her. So it's like, well, where is he? He's giving his position away by keeping yeah, the chainsaw. Yeah, but he doesn't think. Well, he's not. He's yeah. not a stealthy predator. He's just. Rah, he's a main. That's it. Yeah. He's not. He's not. He's not thinking to. I'm going to play. Cat I know. And mouse. But I was just he's thinking. Just chasing well, after. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I know, genuinely but... don't get why they gave him raises in his boots anyway. If he's already six four, they said when he kept walking through the house, he kept hitting his head off door frames and stuff. Imagine if they kept that in. Boom. <laughs> exactly. If you're already that big, you don't need those boots. And and when she was only through the the woods, while well, she cut herself to ribbons. Yeah, so most like of the blood cuts. you see on Sally throughout the film is her own blood from cuts and bruises. I'm assuming that that chainsaw was never actually properly revved while he was running in when they were filming it. No, no, <laughs> you, you there was know. no health and safety. The chainsaw. Actually, yeah, was he, he would have been revving it because he's genuinely cutting down yeah, trees and branches. Well, them. I saw like like the dust or whatever coming out. Yeah. Not not the bits where he's cutting down the trees, but every. Every other bit where he's running with yeah, the chainsaw. I reckon it was genuine. On because they they that, wouldn't they, have made a fake prop for him. No, they definitely wouldn't have. So that was a chainsaw on. Yeah, it was a genuine it's chainsaw. A real chainsaw. That's like, that's so if it had fell or something, something. curtains. Yeah. Well, <laughs> when he, later, later on, when he cuts through his own bloody leg, yeah. and he screams, and that's him actually screaming because he's cut through his own leg, and he goes, ah! Because that's him cutting through his own <laughs> health. This is the 70s, and it was made a different one, and it was no one cared about health. 300 grand. 300 grand. Was it 300? 300. 300 thousand. But yeah, it's after that we get more like horror movie tropes now. Sally runs into the house and goes straight upstairs. If you're trying to escape from someone, Never. don't go upstairs. However, yeah, I, I was thinking that, but then I did think, clever girl, you jump straight out the window. You, you, you didn't thought what? Clever girl. No. I didn't think... <laughs> that, that's one thing I do like. She didn't go, she out the window. Yeah, she didn't go and corner herself. And so we, I was expecting her to do that, but I thought, okay, props to you, fine. you jumped out the window, that's what you were uh, doing. It was um, Toby Hooper who jumped out that window. Because they Just couldn't afford a stuntman, so I told you who jumped Was it a real window? Well, it was like a fake a sugar window. Sugar glass. glass. Sugar yeah. glass. Yeah, yeah that's what, that's what what I mean. But then, then um, she really hurt herself falling out the window as well. Yeah, they had to show her just landing, so she did a little jump, but landed on the glass and just cut herself up even more. Most um, of the film is her getting battered in real injured. life. Yeah, so when she first goes upstairs and you see like the corpses, or you think of corpses, did you think that the old man was alive, well, Grandad was alive? Of course not. Why would you? Why on earth would you think that? It, again, it's, it's, only, more granddad, right? it's only hindsight where I'm thinking, oh, I know he's the head of this family. Yeah, but no, I just thought they're corpses. Yeah, which I think, you know, that's quite... Because well, they look the, decomposed. The, yeah. the guy in the granddad, he took... The, the guy in the granddad outfit hated being in the makeup so much he refused to do it for more than one day. So he's in the makeup for 35 hours. Well, yeah, we'll go on to the granddad later because I've got yeah. questions about that. But <laughs> we'll <come to laughs> that. I, was thinking, I was thinking that Nate's going to love Grandpa. <laughs> this is uh, when Leatherface comes back to the house. This is the bit that annoys me. Well, a the bit. bit. There's a couple of bits. He starts chainsawing through the door to get in. You seem to do about like, seven chainsaws. But then he just opens the door normally and walks through anyway. It's not a very sturdy door then. Well, he's. I mean, it is a real sturdy door then. Yeah, he, he does that loads of times. With a chainsaw. And then he doesn't break the lock, he literally just opens the door normally afterwards. But he's in the throes of chainsaw madness, isn't he? To be fair, yeah, it has just taken over. And it. again, it's a visual in it. You want the audience. There he's using the chainsaw to mm. get through the door. So you'd, you'd have to. And then he was, like, at that point, Sally jumps out the window, which is meant to be a common theme in every single Texas Chainsaw Massacre film. Someone jumps out of a window. That's a little. Easter egg, I guess you'd yeah, call I it. Why is she run back film. into the house? She doesn't run back into the house? She does to run upstairs. Oh, from there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah like, that, that's, done that? that's, that's just a, a, again, a trope, a horror film trope. Yeah, which but usually that's, leads that's to not an explanation, though, it, is it? It usually leads to people dying, but at this point, 
Again, if you've watched a lot of horror films, you're going to know Sally survives because she's the final girl. There's always a final well, yeah, girl. Well, I, mean, I don't know any of these tropes. I'm just thinking, oh, this is saft. It's always the girl who, like, okay, so you look at Pam and Kirk went off to go down skinny dipping and, you know, do whatever. And they paid the price for skinny dipping. They paid the price for that. It's this astrology. Disco Jerry didn't really do anything wrong. He just he just died. Look at Disco, in it. He exactly. represents the death of Disco. <laughs> yeah. In 1974. Yeah. Didn't have a long shelf life, did he? Toby Hooper could see where Disco was going at the time. <laughs> he thought, in six years, this is going to be dead. done. But no, and even when going back a bit, when they killed Franklin, I think would have been a bit well, shocking. Well, Franklin is the idea because normally uh, you're not going to kill the disabled exactly, guy. Exactly, yeah. And They'll keep him alive. Dead. Which I think would have been quite shocking to see. But yeah, so Sally makes it back to the gas station. Did you think she was safe at this point, Nate? No, she's back there. Hold on, just before we go into that bit. So talking about Franklin's death again. Yeah. Leatherface is protecting his property. Why does he kill Franklin? Because at this point he's thinking, right, you've all broken to my house. I'm just but he all, hasn't. I'm pissed off. Franklin hasn't. He no, didn't. but he's thinking that they're, they're going to do it as well. They're all together. He sees them just all as the oh, same Oh, yeah, group. so this person in a wheelchair is going to come and break into my house. Again, I don't think he but thinks he's, like he's we not, would. He's not thinking like rationally. Is he? He's a dude wearing someone's face over his own. Yeah. So what's, what's the deal with that? It's a psychological thing, arguably, because there's three masks he wears. You've got the yeah. first one, the butcher mask. You've got the then old woman. The old woman mask. Where he's like it, preparing food, and then he's best, like and he's pretty, pretty best, he's pretty. He's wearing his pretty mask at the meal because yeah. he wants to look his best. Yeah. It's like a personality. Well, what, is it ever mentioned why we don't see his actual face? Is he Doesn't he not like his face? Not in this, in this film, it doesn't say, yeah. In, if we just stick to this film, then no, it's just... Well, there's obviously, he's obviously... Sorry, because his teeth are all you weird. You see glimpses of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And that's, that. that was done by um, Gunnar Hansen's own dentist. He asked yeah. him to make some weird teeth. Custom okay. made just for him. Because you assume he's inbred. And it, he's got it's implied, isn't it? deformities. Mm. I can't think, do we ever see his face? In any of the films? Yeah. <clears throat> Maskless. I think we do. Um, I can't think which one. Hold on. We don't in the second one. don't think we do in the third. Well, apart from when he's young. No, but that, that doesn't count. Does so, it? I, I'm assuming that when he worked in the abattoir, he didn't wear this leather face. No, I don't think he did. It's no, only when it's, the it's abattoir went off. That, that he they decided, all, I'm going to wear went, some skin. They all went mad. See, so they it, only went mad after it shut down. But, but it's also implied that... Been inbred it's, it's, that. Impl- it's implied... It's implied it's like the, it was an outlet for his... And the thing not working in the killing animals was an outlet for his own like psychopathic behaviour. Right. It's also suggested, again, more more so in other films, that they're not an actual family. Mm. They all just worked at the same place and they've just banded together now and thinking, right, we have to be a family. Actually, we all survive together. Thinking they about it, actually, thinking about it, with the, again, in one of the prequels to the reboot... You do see his face, and the reason he starts wearing faces is because he fancies this one girl. He sees he's in, she's in love with a with a boyfriend. So he, when he kills the boyfriend, he cuts his face off and puts it over his own to try and woo this girl he's fallen in love with. I can't remember that one. But that's in the reboot. I can't remember that. And it's implied that the face we see in this one is the face of that chap, but just it's melted mm. and mangled over time. So you're saying that the you're not like in the phage in. In Star Trek Voyager, when that guy fancies to take it back to something he knows. Oh man, I can't. I've only watched Voyager once. So I can't remember. I remember the phage vaguely. Yeah, there's a guy who fancies Bellana Torres, so he, he he has the face of a Starfleet officer grafted to his own. Fair enough. But going back to what you said about, so it can be implied that they're not actually a family. But where's the inbred stuff come from? No, I think they are family. Again, it, it, it's, it's, it's only in some some like films. It the same. A minute ago. Oh. Yeah, it's only in some films they suggest that they're not a real family. They just all worked at this place and now they're they together. Red, then? Again, that's the thing. Like it's it's conflicting. It's only a theory. It's not confirmed. They just Where are the Matrox, this family? Well, actually, there's a bit later on, okay. Okay, there is, and in the second one, they talk more about there that There's something well. later on that I didn't notice. In the second one, they talk about it. But yeah, so Sally then makes it back to the gas station. Do you think she's safe at this point? At this point, because I didn't know that the gas station man was... Did you think the, the gas station guy was going to get it? Um, the, did you think no, the no, no at that point I did think he'd be in on it, because I was like, well, Leatherface was just buggered off, he was right behind her, yeah. and now he's just gone. Yeah. <laughs> just like, well, clearly he, he knows not to go in there. I remember something. watching this for the first time, I thought... Old man, I thought he's a good guy. I thought that ginger chap's going to come back and he's in on it. No, no. And as soon as like Leatherface had gone, he was right behind her. Yeah. Well, first time I thought it'd be this hollow chap where he looks outside. There's no one there. Comes back and Leatherface storms in from the other side and massacres him. Yeah, that is always a chance. Yeah, but I, I've never seen any of these 
stuff. So yeah. I don't know any of these tropes. With, with horror films, as soon as you think someone's safe after the first big chase, they're not safe. It's, again, a common thing. No, I knew, I knew she wouldn't be safe. There has to be, like... I knew a, they'd yeah. be in, in on it. I thought mm. it would like, be mates or something. I, mean, I will honestly say, for me, I think he's the grimmest character, as in the most disturbing. Do you reckon? Yeah, I do because he's got that weird. He's the like the almost the face of normality, and then yeah, but he's yeah. in the way he's like, oh, I hate killing. And then he's laughing along with them, and he's like, I can't watch this, and he keeps coming back in to see when they've done it. Yeah, and he's, he's just, I find him really disturbing because he's trying to be like, oh no, I'm above this, and then he starts laughing with it, and I find that's why I find him the. I find the hitchhiker the most disturbing. <clears throat> I genuinely find him the most. But yeah, disturbing. but it was it was only at this point that I realised that they're cannibals. Because you, what you see cooking, yeah, yeah, she looks and sees the meat, and I'm assuming that's when everybody else would have first realised. Yeah, on, on people's first viewing of it. Yeah. Well, exactly, yeah. And yeah, that, yeah. that is my first viewing. So at that yeah. point, it was like, oh, okay, so that's what they're doing. Yeah, and I think it's at this point, trusty radio exposition comes back into it as well, explaining what's happened with more grave robberies and all that. Mm. Every single time you hear the radio, it's progressing the plot. I think he mentions, I think or, and he mentions missing hikers at one point yeah, as well in the does. Texan area. So, <clears throat> if you've got the urge to watch it again, listen nope. to the radio. Well, be watching it well again. we're not going to get to that <laughs> just no. yet. Um, but yeah, it's this point I like uh, mm. where you see Old Man finally turns on her. And then well, uh, we've that's got a really disturbing scene. Knife versus Broom. Broom wins. I think but, it's disturbing. Well, as you see, that's, that's the closest to real things that could happen to someone yeah. rather than like chat. I just think it's weird. Well, well, obviously it is weird. Yeah, and it's just, I think it's just, that's so you're not really going to come see. across that, really, are you? The thing I that will does happen, yeah. Does, but you're yeah. more likely to do that than a Texas real, than a chainsaw wielding maniac wearing someone else's face. But yeah, so she picked up a knife. She saw what was cooking. She knew what was going on. She could smell what <coughs> that man was cooking. Yeah. She could smell l l l l l. That's the one. And then picked finally, up a knife, and then he backed. Okay. But he used the sweepy end of the broom. I thought if you're gonna broom, I use the wood handle end. Well, she's surface area. She's yeah, only so terrified by that point. Terrified and, and she's going physically exhausted. Because yeah. I thought if someone like mm. brushed me, and I'd be just like, "What are you doing?" That up. However, you, I mean, you do say physically exhausted, but the adrenaline at this point would be through the roof. Yeah, you'd be able point. to rip the door off its hinges. Yeah, but then she's she's cracked in her head, don't she? As well, adrenaline. Drink Again, bringing it back to science. Yeah, but it's the Texas Chainsaw. People can yeah. lift cars on adrenaline. It, it stuff. happens. Yeah, people, no, no, yeah, I'm disputing it's, that. It's absolutely crazy. Like, if you just were to sustain those injuries just sitting down, you'd be in agony thinking, oh my God, a cool move. I've been cut up and chased. But then you, your life is on the line. That's why it's your body does it. it. That's, why, that's why you can do these superhuman things. Well, they say that you when you have the electric shock and people get flying across the room. It's not because of the electric, it's because of your muscle spasms and yeah. pushing yourself. I've never heard that. I've never... <laughs> <laughs> knew that the electric shocks someone and they go flying across a room. Have you never seen Jurassic Park on the electric fence? But you know, yeah, people, that's a conversation for another time because that's all wrong. But when they get electrocuted no, no, no. because he wasn't grounded. He was but, grounded but, yeah. but they say like, when you get electric shock and people get thrown back by the force of the electricity sometimes, it's like the muscle spasms are like pushing you backwards. That's what they say. Yeah, you've got to push off something. Yeah. So... <laughs> We're going to have to look into this one, I think. So, if, I was to, if you put your finger in a plug socket... Should we test You've not really got anything to push off, have you? So, you're not going to go flying back. I'm just... If I'm, not, I'm not saying... You, you, if, you muscle, if your muscles spasm, they've got to spasm and push back off something pretty hard for you to go flying. I suppose, yeah. You so, could, it depends you're on what you've been I'm not the one who's with. saying this is what happens. This is just something I'm about. Anyway, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so if they weren't strapped down on the electric chair, they'd go through the ceiling. Maybe that's why they strap them down. <laughs> no, the, the, the electric go, no, think about it. The electric goes through the head, so it pushes them down, doesn't it? Maybe no, so they'd spasm, yeah, they'd spasm and they'd then push they'd, against the chair. Yeah, they'd, they'd slide down. They'd go <laughs> down no, the they'd, spasm they would, would push against would. it. They'd push them down and they'd go, well... Feet first. John Coffey's blasting off again. If you were in a seated position, that window, if you were in a seated down, position, it like a bullet. If you were in a seated position yep. and your muscles spasmed, your legs would kick you up. Now you go, you get legs up, so you go, Wah! and so you go like a lucky. Like so, oh, so, you, so Hollywood suggesting that your body's going to try and get oh, away from the electricity. So you get down so, first so to get away down. from it. No, where, 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 where 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 your body does a spasm to get away. It does. You ping down. You ping down. Spasm is well. It's like a you. Our brains are just electrochemical anyway, so yeah. it's just... But they want, don't want that much electrochemical, they just want electricity. If you're listening, Elon Musk, can you please can let you us know? Because <laughs> we need to know. And what's your, you know, pinging everywhere. Well, exactly. yeah, but it's moot anyway, because I just think the whole thing that you've just said about people firing backwards is because of the muscle spasm. Again, they're going to have something to push off against in order for it to happen. I've completely forgotten Otherwise, the story of this film. <laughs> I don't know what's happening anymore. Oh, yeah, back to the film. Back to, back to the massacre. What, where, where are we? Hold on. Oh, yeah, so she gets hogtied. 
Is this point where you found it quite disturbing? Oh, no, it's really disturbing. It is pretty horrible. She's getting hog tied. a bloody rag in her mouth. And this is the point where you started laughing as well. Because I started chuckling. <laughs> so not when she gets hog tied, because that would be really wrong. <laughs> look, look at her. I was uh, going to say, why well, didn't laugh at that? Old point. man puts her in a truck, he starts his engine, sits there, turns his engine off, gets back out, turns his lights on, comes back in, starts the engine. Oh, no, have you missed a bit here? Nope. No, that's, that's, that's now, you know, so, okay, so. He hog ties her. He sticks in the van. Yeah, he starts the van. She turns around off, shit. gets out, shuts the door and goes, oh, electricity, that, leave me alone, that could put a man out of business. Can she, she, oh, okay, yeah, I was thinking about another bit later on. No. Um, was, what was I laughing for? I think moment? because he literally just started his truck and then he stops it as soon as he started it to so just light, get back out. Turn the light off and lock the door. It's like, just leave your truck running, you're going to use more petrol turning it off and on like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, and it's at this point... I've put HH Return, which is obviously a Hitchhiker, but I briefly thought it was Hulk Hogan's Return. <laughs> I thought, what a save that would be in the film. You just see you get hogtied. Mm. Da, 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 so where'd he been? Da, da. Hulk Hogan. The Hitchhiker? Where'd he'd he been, been fanning around the graveyard, probably. Yeah, yeah. That's what they say. You say he's been hanging around the graveyard again. He's like, sorry, I didn't get seen. I didn't get seen. Because old man comes out to go and bop him. It says, it says you've been hanging around the graveyard again, but shouldn't he be hanging around the graveyard? Is if it's him See, that's I, desecrating? I, this is the, he's desecrating, but I don't think they want him to be desecrating. So why is he doing it then? Because he's mad. So he's not. So he's not doing it to lure the people. Well, to there's, the area there's, then. there's two theories behind it, and that's so you can, he's either doing it to all people in, which is what he wants, but then the dad doesn't want him to do it. So well, he's luring them in for himself to lure them there. Well, I'm assuming that the dad does to keep his business going, that barbecue gas business. Well, he's only gas, does he? This is the I thing. think that their plan isn't to kill people. That's not what they're here for. They just want to rob these graves. They're trying to use bodies that are already dead. Hitchhiker's job is to go out and get them. That's why he to was rob already... rob the graves? Yes, yeah, he was already in the area, so he could go and rob the graves, bring them back to Leatherface. Leatherface cuts up the meat, chef cooks them. If that's them. the plan, why is he angry about him hanging around the graveyard? So we, yeah, so we, oh, because he doesn't want to get seen because he heard on the radio that um, like hitchhikers have gone missing, mm. that all these grave robberies. Are I think he's drawing attention to the grave rob- the great. Maybe it's because he's drawing attention by putting poles up and then making silly. Exactly, he's like you're drawing stuff attention stuff to us. Out. Then he's like, no one saw me. Don't worry, no one saw me. But I think it's at that point, old man's getting concerned that they're going to get found out. But I think he's just there to rob graves, and they're not killers as such. They only kill when necessary. To start with, and then they get a bit... See, at this point, a bit, a bit of a I was list. thinking, and I don't know if it ever mentions it, but it's implied, I was thinking that that's his dad. That hitchhiker's his son. It, that's it what is. I was thinking. Yeah. It, I think it's, it's meant to be, but then again, if they're a real family, which I think they are a real, well, family. A real family. And then, like, because it's the, he refers to Leatherface as the hitchhiker's brother. Yeah, he yeah. says, you can't leave your brother, you've left your brother alone. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so then we go back to Leatherface. Hold on, oh, hold on. on. So on that point then, you can't leave your brother, you can't leave your brother alone... So, at what point was he supposed to stay with Leatherface? Was he never supposed to be out on the yeah, highway? Yeah, he's not meant to be out fanning around at the graveyard. He should be there looking after his brother. I think he, I all think, the time. I so, think, I so, think it's never, so, they can't no, be on long no, going, I've, robbing graves and stuff? Yeah, they like can. That? Like, if wait for Old Man to get home is when he's with Leatherface after he's worked at the gas station. Hitchhiker goes out at night to rob the graves. But that, he wasn't he just out at night doing he, it? He, he wasn't just out at night, and that's why Old Man's pissed off with him. Because well, someone should be leather fa- with Leatherface. So, when, he's, when, the dad, mm. when the dad's off at the... Petrol station, the two brothers should be at the house, and then when the dad comes back, the other brother can then bug off to the grave. Yeah. Side, maybe. Okay. Again, that's, that's only one it's idea. It's all supposition, it. isn't it? But then, well, I don't, I, well, I don't know. You guys have seen everything after this and, <laughs> and prior to this. I don't know if it's ever revealed, or is it just you have to imply at this stage? <laughs> this stage. If, don't, if it is, don't say. If we've, if we've got to yeah. we'll talk about the others. But yeah. is it yeah. ever categorically addressed? They, they change a lot of the history of the entire family and what they've done and everything throughout every sequel. Okay. So, but it, it is like every other film they wreck on it. Yeah, this is the one problem. So then, it, so after uh, so Chase, Chase Massacre three ignores Chess, uh, number two. Yeah, where and, Chase, and number four is a reboot of the whole thing. Then number five is a sequel to the first one again, ignoring the second film and the third film. So in any and the fourth film, yeah. So the sequel to this original. Does it ever explain categorically? You mean then? the Dennis Hopper one? No, the fight number five. I can't remember much oh, number it's been five. So long since I've they... seen Matthew McConaughey or Viggo Mortensen. Viggo Mortensen's number three. Number four, I think, is Matthew McConaughey and Renee Zellweger. 
I think, but again, they all start to meld into one and at I some don't, point. I don't think it's ever categorical. Okay, so at this Off point, you well, and at this, this point, you know, know if like, you're watching it for the first time, you're supposed to just kind of guess. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Is it is it all planned? But is the, it just a horrible series? But of the events? old Tobes has never confirmed it. <laughs> he might have, but I've not looked into it. No, we might have to well, do well, this after we finish this. Well, we'll have a look. Podcast then. But yeah, so we know we see Leatherface's second mask, his old woman mask, when he's preparing. You don't Wait, get a good look at it, though, I don't think. You don't know. You see the hair. You see a good shot of the hair, which is yeah. a traditional like elderly lady's hairstyle. Mm. It's meant to be a pair. Good afternoon. <laughs> good afternoon. Are you the vicar? If you're watching vicar, good Are afternoon. You the vicar? Um, no, has no idea. <laughs> well, I don't think anyone has any idea. Shout yeah. out to Jelly. Yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, so you see uh, his old woman. That's when he's like preparing the food and all that, and then that goes straight. And they all get a whooping. Yeah, you see, those leather faces terrified of the old man. He's got a chainsaw. He could just chainsaw his pocket. Yeah, but he needs. <laughs> I know, I know, yeah. I know. He's uh, he just. I think he just wants to make his family happy, and he'll do whatever they tell him to. I picked up on that. That's it's very like. So I, I didn't really feel sorry for Franklin. I feel sorry for Leatherface more than anyone. Not really. You feel <laughs> sorry for Leatherface. You feel sorry for that big six foot seven. Three hundred pound monster Mass with a chainsaw. Yeah, because if he was brought up in a decent family, if he was brought up in a good family, he'd be completely different. You could say that about anybody. Surely. Not necessarily. If Freddy Krueger was given an org when he was a kid, none of that would happen. So I feel sorry. If Freddy Alice Cooper Kruger. wasn't his dad, <laughs> yeah. it would have been oh spoilers. Sorry, just in case. Oh, he does want to watch the spoilers. Freddy's dead. Yeah. Forget we said that, mate. I can't. <laughs> Alice Cooper is his dad. How can I forget that? <laughs> Something you'll take to the grave with you. <laughs> Shout out to the man himself. No, you, you can't start saying, oh, I feel sorry for Leatherface if only he'd been brought up differently. You, could you don't know because you've got the whole um, nature nurture thing as well. Well, exactly. Yeah. But again, like, it only It'd still like, be inbred, wouldn't it? With, with films that come afterwards when you do see a younger Leatherface, I feel a bit for him mm. there. Do but your stuff, cuz. I didn't then. No, not with that. God's sake. With Heatherface. <sighs> um, but yeah, so then we get to the dinner scene, and so this is when you see that the, the grandpa, um, Grondin. What's is the deal with man. his face? Tell me. What's okay, the really, deal the, with his the, the, the actor is about twenty-five. They had, they had a young actor. No, so tell me, what are they saying is his, happened to his face in this film? He's, he's just really, really old. He's, so old that, he's not wearing a mask or anything? That's no, supposed no, to be his that's old face. Really I really thought really he was really like old. wearing a, a leather face mask. No, that's no, meant to no, be his face. No, he's really, really, really old. It was like proper heavy makeup they put on to make him look as old as possible. I thought but there was to put a mask on him in no, there. No, no, it's the time to make look old and decrepit. Uh, well, so I'm putting it down to just 1970s his makeup. No. I was thinking, what are they doing here? No, he's no just meant the guy part. refused to be in it after one day, so they had to film all of the grand scenes hours in one right? day. It was a 36 hour day, 15 hours of filming. Five hours was his makeup, fifteen filming, then loads of other stuff. But yeah, it was at that point where the heat was intense and people were passing out. Yeah, and being sick and. Just had the smell was horrendous. Okay, it's home. Exactly. It, it was for this scene as well. Um, Edwin Neal, the chap who plays the hitchhiker, he said he served in Vietnam, and he said this was the worst experience of his life. He says this was worse than Vietnam, and I had people shooting at me and trying to kill me. He said he'd rather do that again than film this dinner scene. Because it was so hot, it was so t- the lights and everything stank because it was all proper meat bones and everyone started yeah, to but hate. Did you say that at the time or in retrospect? At, at the time, well, exactly. So you might have think differently in retrospect, but I don't know. I'll have to ask him. <laughs> If you if you're listening, whatever your name is, Edwin Neal, Ari Osborne, <laughs> yeah, Daniel <laughs> so yeah, Ari Osborne. This, we, we spoke earlier about like iconic scenes, isn't it, with the bear hug and the hammer. The dinner scene is. So this is where I was thinking. Well, this is where Resident Evil got it the from. Ultimate yeah. Resident Evil. Obviously, I've only played a bit of it because I don't do but horror you, games. You played like the dinner. But... You saw the dinner scene, didn't you? When they so yeah, this is the inspiration. The, the thing with this as well, like you know, uh, and where... all the screaming as well. I mean, and the yeah, close yeah. eyes. I like she's the close going mad. Eyes. I, like I, 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 I wrote down about her, that. It was like a, a representation of a mental state at that point. I she like was just snapping. Could, you could see it. I just thought it was just showing you the sheer terror. Yeah, you could see like the clarity, like the little red like veins in her eyes, that, and, and that weird, that that really high pitched whine noise you could hear on top of the screams. It made it also uncomfortable, I think, to watch it. What? Is the deal with the blood sucking grandma? Well, I'm glad you asked because I was literally just about to say that. Take it away, Wesker. <laughs> Originally, um, they had like a fake knife, and when they were going to do the incision, it was going to spout out some fake blood. They couldn't get it to work, so they literally had to cut um, Sally's finger. They really, really cut her, and he was really sucking her blood. Um, I think it's just because, you know, he's the patriarch of a cannibal family, this gets him going. But yeah, they, they couldn't get the fake blood to work, so they just sliced um, her open. No, uh, uh, well, that. Remember, can't it's be, a film. Suspend your belief. No, 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 no. But that can't, that can't be right if what you said previously is true. Then, so you're saying 
when they worked in the slaughterhouse, they weren't cannibals. They only turned to cannibals after the slaughterhouse. But if he's been the head of a cannibalistic family for this long and he's a bloodsucker... Yeah, but we don't know when they closed the slaughter. Could, even if he's been doing this for like 10, 20 years or something. You don't know. The, the slaughterhouse wouldn't have been... Actually, no, it wouldn't have been closed for that long. That's the so, point. I've never actually well, thought could about have, He could have been feared animal blood up until that point. It and it's just there's no differentiation between human and animal blood. But why feed him blood? He, he could have just developed because a taste later on his Because he's so old, he can't eat... Um, solid food anymore it's like giving him mush so give me hepatitis I don't think well, look at him is he worried about getting hepatitis I don't think, look, look at the whole house he's probably teeming with the stuff give me blood uh, so I was thinking why on earth is he sucking blood at this point yeah and then uh, I can't buy that one of the things has got to be wrong if you're saying it's because he's the head of a cannibalistic family and he likes that's to suck blood like Dracula no I, I don't think I think it's just they feed him blood because of um He's so old and grabbed he can't. He had it so, solid food. And I'm not saying it's people's blood that gets him out. It's just blood. So a tiny bit of blood from a finger is going to fill him up. Not fill him up. No, but no, just not, I think not it, it gets him going. Yeah. It, it starts like him a off. Shot of whiskey. Look at him before that. He's, he can barely move. Well, he can still barely move after he has. It's it, just but. a horrific scene, isn't it, to inspire horror? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> if that's just the intention, is just to be horrific, then fine. I just want to know the reason behind it, as to why he's doing that, mm. oh. and what the intention was. Well, it's one of them it's open to interpretation, I think. I did notice there was a woman's face on top of the table. Was there? Yes, there was a woman's face. It was blatant. Yeah. So then I was thinking, when I was talking about a matriarch, I'm assuming that was her. Was that, there was a lamp on it? I can't remember what it was, I just remember, yeah, it was like over the table, it was a woman's face. Yeah. Yeah, um, this this is the point where we see the face is pretty woman mask as well. This is my favourite mask, I think, that he has. Did you notice that the mask was changing when you were watching it? Look. He's in makeup at this point. He's got lipstick on and stuff. Um, yeah. When I very first watched it, I only thought there were two masks that Leatherface had. I didn't realise the old woman and the pretty woman were different. There's a deleted scene that they sh- shows Leatherface getting ready for tea with putting putting the ma- the hair the yes. wig on yeah, on yeah. the mask and putting makeup on the suit out the film. It's a deleted okay. scene. It's a good scene. I, I would have kept it. In. So if you hadn't realised it before, then but you had. So what's your interpretation of that? Female face at the head of the table, or well, at the middle of the table. Honestly, I just thought it was another victim. Did you? Yeah, I, th- I, th- I, I thought the matriarch of the family, if anything, it was the goopy thing upstairs, the grandpa. Yeah, there is that. But then I don't know. I thought that it wasn't a victim. I thought that would be part of the family because they're there at the table eating mm. with them or something like that. So I, thought, I never really thought about it. So I, I just assumed it was another victim. I just thought they're yeah, they're there at the table eating together. Mm. So I thought it was one of their family. I, at that point, I did mm. think, yeah, this is like the mother or something. Because mm. the you know, big matriarch could have been grandpa's missus. That could have been old gasoline man's wife or something. Mm. Again, it's not until the second one they mention that. But if we watch it, hopefully it'll answer a few questions. But then it'll get retconned straight away after anyway. So, yeah, I did see that and I thought, um, yeah. No, it's interesting though. I never really contemplated it. Did, mm. did you feel a close connection to the Sawyer family at this point? Because Grondins is in the meat trade. No. So, do you so, think, do you that, think that, this could I be think us? that scene's really bad when they're trying to kill her and he can't even hold he's so decrepit he can't even hold <laughs> well, the, like, the, well, why are they doing this why are they saying go on grandpa you're the best at this you, what, you, all that you just said he's like really bad I'm just put Grondin's hammer scene cool I like it <laughs> so what, why are they saying oh you're the best at this killer because, because, he, because he, he was the best the at this yeah, of course, yeah, the course he was but they know now that he can oh, yeah, but do they're anything cra- they're crazy though aren't they you take it back to the fact that they're warmer and also and to be honest, it's like the guy said, I've been thinking about this, I'll give it to Grandpa. And because he, he knows that he can't do it, I think the hitchhiker. And he's t- he's t- he's playing with her. Because, you know, because the, the the old man's a bit me- he's mental and he's like, oh, it won't hurt none. He's like, but he's like, it will hurt because he knows what will happen to it. Mm. Um, what happens after that? Didn't I see? Oh, yeah, we get a second window jump. Did you prefer this one? Because I know you're a fan of your window jumps. That's when she hurt her ankles, I think. <clears throat> I liked it when she jumped out that window. But it's like, when did they untie her? When um, they were taking it to they, they take They take her over to Grondins, and then you just see... Uh, Hitch- <laughs> they see Hitchhiker like, just gets her in a hammerlock, basically. And the yeah, and he's, all, he's on her hammerlock, just holding her head, and that, but she's untied then. Why do they untie her? Because it's all in the heat at the moment, isn't it? They don't think to untie her, and then... They, they want to take her to Grandad to get it done, because she's tied to the chair, and if she's going to be held over a bucket to have her head kicked in... So, Not him. so, so they untie Grandad and take worked the slaughterhouses then as well. Then back in the day, using the traditional hammer. Yeah, that's what yeah. He, he was the best. That, in that's the what the, the thing. He was Chernobog, basically. Well, they talk about the hammer thing right at the start of the 
the thing yeah, with the I know, Ucha, yeah. don't they? That's what I was just thinking, Chernobog again. I mean, if you haven't seen all Red American Gods. No, I'm not. Chernobog. Have they, released, have, they, have they released season two yet? Uh, no, not yet. Um, right, dinner scene, window jump. Yeah, one of my favourite bits now. Okay, so Sally's escaping. What does she see when she escapes? A big truck. Yeah, <laughs> what does that truck do? Stops for her. What does it do before it stops? It runs a truck over. Oh, yes, it Which, does, which yes. I don't get. Like, okay, obviously in the heat of the moment, yeah, he's trying to kill her and all that. You can hear and see a big 18-wheeler truck coming towards you. Well, maybe he was going to push her in front of it. And in the confuffle, she pushes him back. I don't know why they've got the intention he even noticed it. I was not picking up on that. He was just so fixated. Well, like, gonna... He catches up with her miles before yeah, the Yeah, he, he, he keeps slashing, slashing her back, her, yeah. which I don't get. Like, he's right by her. He just slashes her back. I'll just grab t- her, he's... pull her in. Oh, because he's torturing her. He's, he's just he, yeah, he likes, he likes her. playing with him, doesn't he? Well, you've seen what he does with the razor and yeah, stuff, exactly. haven't you? Yeah, he is a bit tapped. But no, then <laughs> we see the trucker. <laughs> this is what I like. This the... is, oh, this was just stupid. This bit. this was really stupid. When the trucker sees Leatherface and he thinks, sod this, gets back in, he picks up his wrench. Why doesn't he just drive off? Again, it, it, but it's easy to say with a clear head. No, oh no, hang I on, think it's hang one of on. these. You don't know how you'll react until you're in that situation. Did he drop? Just, did he, did he ta- when he took just, when he took his keys? Out, did he drop his keys? Let's just <laughs> get back a tad. <laughs> so, the big <laughs> truck runs over the hitchhiker. Yes, good. He opens the door to let what's her face in. Sally, mm. this is Leatherface come in. Instead of just driving off at that point, they decide to open the other door to get out with the pipe wrench. When they could have just driven off. Again, you don't think clearly in those but situations. No, hold on, but did he? <laughs> hold on, if you were in this situation, I don't, I don't know how. Because the other problem you got. The thing is, it shows that Leatherface can't get in because the door, the he attacks the door with to no effect. It just scratches the paintwork. Yeah, but drive off. I was wondering, <laughs> did the guy take his key? When he stopped the kid, did he take his key or take him out and then drop them? I doubt, well, it was very quick. You'd, you'd think if or he was going to do he that. he was thinking he's going to be a badass and take him down with a wrench. But I think if, like he, if he drops the key, they'd have to make a point of it in the film. You'd have to show him clearly dropping these. I just thought at this point, to stop people stupid. Like they're, both, they're both in the big rig. The doors are shut. Drive off into the sunset. And then well, the I like that. You never see, you don't see it happen to the truck driver. He just buggers off into the distance. You see oh, him running through it. I thought he, I thought you saw Leatherface actually get him. No, 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 no. You don't. No, no, you don't, don't. Do you? He, you see him run off. Oh yeah, you see him throw the wrench at Leatherface. Hear a nice little bump sound effect. And that's when he cuts himself in it. Yeah, that's yeah. A screaming off. So, so a gunner Hanson. He had a metal plate on his legs, trying to protect him. With some on, meat on. on top of that, he had some meat, and then like a blood pack, he falls, soars through the meat. And then the friction of the chainsaw starts cutting into his leg, burns this metal plate, and it just singes straight into his leg. So as you just hear, ah! That's it. That's that's gonna Hanson, not <laughs> Leatherface. Going, no, what think. the hell have I done? I've just permanently embedded some boiling up metal into my leg. So he's got a scar there now. Well, he's dead now. Is he? Yeah. yeah. So if you're watching Gunnar Hanson, fair, everyone is watching. <laughs> yeah. Well, this might be on YouTube as well, but well, it will be. But you won't be watching it. No, you won't be just staring at this poster thing. You don't know got. what Gunnar Hanson gets up to. In that big cannibal <laughs> house in the sky. <laughs> the big Sawyer house in the, the big sky. slaughter house in the sky. <laughs> but yeah, oh, yeah that, that really wound me up, that truck thing. You'd, you'd have just driven off. Is that why you're you shaking if you stab it at all? Because you're going, you! Why you just wouldn't have got out the other side. You just. But then she, gets, then she gets away at the last minute. Yeah, she does. In that other little truck. Yeah. Yeah, and then we get to your mate who does actually drive off and save him. Get another truck turn up in a little pickup That's truck. That's what we just said. Yeah, yeah, I know. But then, um, sorry, the happy dance. You said you've seen that in Mortal Kombat, didn't you? Well, he's yeah. just swinging his chainsaw We chose that a happy dance. Why well, would he be happy? It's only some people refer to it as that. It's the chainsaw dance. So why is he doing that? Frustration. Yeah, but originally, in, away and he's like, in, the, in the script, all he was meant to do was stomp his feet in anger. But um, Gunnar Hansen felt like that wouldn't show how angry he is. And he said, just to piss Toby Hooper off as well, because everyone hated him at this point. You wanted to scare him. So he just started swinging his chainsaw around and going mental. And this chainsaw again was live. It was a proper sword. real chainsaw. So he thought, he's going to swing it with one hand and twirl around to scare Toby Hooper. He says, you've made our life hell for four weeks. I'm genuinely pissed off. If this cuts someone, mm. we're cutting someone. His clothes had become so rank that no one would sit next to him in the office. <laughs> They'd become solid. They, they wouldn't eat lunch with him. The Sally herself had never... Um, was it Sally? Uh, the girl played Sally had suffered from PTSD. Yeah. And that's her counselling for a long time afterwards because the shoot was so harrowing for her. She cut herself to pieces. <clears throat> her T-shirt she, was solid at the end of it with blood. Did she act again? 
Uh, I can't think of it. We, I'll, I'll have a look into it, but I can't off the top of my head. I don't head, know off the top of my head. I'm sure I've seen an inter- like interviews with her, like on yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I'm sure I've seen on documentaries. But but then, um, the, the strangest things happened after the release. The distributor of the film was actually a front for the mafia. Yeah, it was. Got, it got insane. Of all things, and um, so the. The film was issued, it was a massive hit, but Toby Hooper saw none of the profit. None yeah. of the studio saw none of the profit, because this, this mafia dude had taken all the profit to fund into his illegal mafia stuff. How just took it over? Weren't they making porn films as well? Yeah, yeah they are yeah. making porn. They were trying to use it to like back up their fake snuff film. And so they were using the funding into their illegal activities, because it's making so much money, but no one saw anything of it. Then there was a big lawsuit, then eventually New Line Cinemas got the rights, and they mm. redistributed it. I love New Line. And then also, um, and that's they got a resurgence in the eighties because it first came out it was a big hit, but no one, no one made any money off it at all. It was only the mafia who made any money off it. It's really <laughs> weird. But oh, no, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay, so we got to the end of the film. Um, what do you think this got on IMDb, Nate? Oh, I, I don't know because it's one of those where I think. In hindsight, people would have liked it because I say oh, it was the start of a genre kind of thing. Which is right. It wasn't that when it first started. It was a bit. Uh, what do I think? Word of mouth. Sent yeah. it. Sent it up. I would say got in the seven. So, seven on IMDb. There. So you're going to say seven? Yeah, I'll say seven. Hollywood. What do you think it got on IMDb? I don't know what it got on IMDb. So Doesn't matter. Then. So yeah, it got seven point five on IMDb, which I think's fair. I'm, in, in many a time, it's actually voted one of the scariest films ever made. In yeah. the Top hundred horror well, films of all time. As as you know, oh, well. Or you think I'm just saying it. I don't get scared by like, films and whatever. He says that the, now. The, the, you wait till you watch Nightmare on Elm Street Part 6. Is that considered a scary film? In 1974. I would class it as a disturbing film. Not yeah, scary. it's not scary. At, at no point did I think this is un- so I uncomfortable think un- to watch. I think it's an yeah. uncomfortable film to no, watch. Well, course. again, the thing is, I don't know, because I can separate myself from like, what's going on, because I'm not that... Invested into it, like imagining what it's like in there and what have you. Mm. But at no point did I think, "Oh, this is a bit disturbing" or anything like that. To, if, there were disturbing it, scenes. You got to admit, some scenes. I'd say that the feeling I got the most out of that film for me was boredom. If I'm being really? honest, really, it's slow burn to start yeah. with. Nothing happens for a long time. Boredom was the biggest thing for me through that film. Oh, this not, is hurting me. Not a lot. Not a lot happens, which is. Fine, if you've got like a good story and what have you. Um, but yeah, again, it's not my not my kind of film. But yeah, I was bored through most of it. It's the that's what I'd say. So I was bored of it. And it's your thoughts on it, Hollywood? What do you I think? still think it's a disturbing watch. It's disturbing. I think disturbing sums it up pretty well. I, even when I first watched it, when I was like much younger, I was never scared by it. Um, and it's very bloodless. You go in thinking, "Oh, massacre! Ah, oh, it's going to be." Bits it's a and misleading title. Okay. But then I'm not a fan of overly gory films. I've never have been. No. Unless it's like something like Brain Dead or Evil Dead, I can get behind that. Yeah, that's it's just different. When, when it? the, that's the different. remakes are really schlocky oh, gore, oh. That, that's moving on to something else. But it's just not my thing. Just to put in slightly, Nate, have you ever seen evil, any of the Evil Dead films? Stupid question. Of course, I haven't. Brilliant. We're going to do mm. one of them. Um, but yeah, so Nate, would you recommend this film? It depends who I'm recommending it to, okay. isn't it? S- someone at work, just you don't. Yeah, it it's a casual film fan. They like a bit of horror, a bit of sci-fi, a bit of action, like a bit of everything. Um, I think they'd find it boring. You think, just for, for a casual film goer. If they've never seen it before, yes, it's from the seventies, and some films like hold it well and what have you. Yeah, I mean, it's this, an iconic film. It is. It is in the pantheon of films of the time. Yeah, you know, but. For my tastes, no, I wouldn't recommend well, it. Well, I think that's why it's good that we've all, I say, all got different tastes. Like we could disagree and agree on different things, but I wouldn't because if they're like a, if they're an avid horror fan, and they've never seen this before, which is a kind of, it's <laughs> unlikely to find but... someone like that. Yeah, yeah. It's isn't. one of those films. I feel that if you're a big avid horror fan, you probably should watch it. To, to However, appreciate, I'd, horror films, I'd imagine it? it depends on what you mean by big avid horror fan as well. Because are you a fan of the old traditional horror films like? Frankenstein, like um, Hammer horrors and stuff, and uh, or are you or are you into your paranormal activity? I think your you can, Saw and stuff. If you, if if you watch that, so, Sword, if you like Saw, you should you'd like you'd that. Love this, I think. Yeah. Not the first one because there was nothing in this. Well, I mean, if, if, if you go to a film and you want to see, something. if you want if you want gore, then no. 
If you have to really go for it, if, it's not the film for you. If you want to see the film that planted the seeds for these, then come yeah. and watch it. If you want to see a film about ghosts and goblins and spooks and demons, it's not the film for yeah. you. Again, if you want action, no, it's very, very slow, this yeah. film. I think if you want very slasher slow. films, then yes. It's a prototypical slasher, because I always think it's good to see the origins of a genre. Yeah, and I'm all about my slashers. That's my favourite yeah. subgenre of horror. Love so, slashers. Uh, so the, that's the question, is if you guys would recommend it to people, because I wouldn't, because it's not my taste, and... If I was going to recommend horror films to people to watch that they've never seen, I probably wouldn't say start with this. I would say I would, there's other horror films I would recommend above this to watch. I mean, if, if, they, if they like horror films, I'm, I'm assuming you'd say to them, well, if you're a connoisseur of horror, watch this because then you can appreciate what films have subsequently done and where they got mm. the ideas it, from. It, definitely. But not as a standalone piece. But if you're going into horror and want to start out with it, I wouldn't start with this. I, I still, if I had to say to someone, if I really wanted to get me into horror and I had to pick ten films for them, this would be in that ten films. Well, it so, would have to be Well, here's me. a question then. How do you think I would have reacted to that film and how I have reacted? <laughs> Is it what you'd expect and you, did you think I'd be bored? Or You've reacted exactly how I thought you would. Exactly how I thought... I think, though I was thinking you'd find it boring to begin with, but I thought you might find it a bit disturbing later on. I didn't. Disturbing I isn't the word. I knew it wouldn't well, disturb him. Disturb, how, how are we? I'm trying to think of the word like this. Un, uncomfortable, maybe. Is un, but so, you know, no, I never this, felt yeah. uncomfortable. I mean, it, it is a horrible thing, you know. <laughs> in, inbred yeah. cannibalistic mur- murderers, mm. but I didn't ever feel like uncomfortable. Mm. No. Right. Okay, so I think we've decided Nate wouldn't recommend unless it's to an avid horror fan. I would definitely recommend it being 10 horror films you Is have it... to see. And Hollywood, you think, yeah, watch it. But... Watch it, but I wouldn't st- if you've never seen horror before, don't start with it. The thing is, if you make me watch any horror film, chances are I'm not going to recommend it, is it because I'm I don't like them? Saying that, though, okay, so we won't do it because we've all seen it now and it's not a we've never seen, but you watch The Thing for the first time with me in Hollywood, would you recommend that to people? <coughs> That's a horror That's film. That might be something for another discussion. Okay, okay. Say fair enough, fair enough. One of my favourite films of all time, I'll say that. So, yeah, if it is, then I think we'll have to do it at some point if we're doing favourite films. But, yeah, thanks for checking out our very first uh, pagging. We hope you enjoyed it. If there's any films that you'd like us to do, just, you yeah. know, um, let us know. Um, check out the other videos on the YouTube channel if you're listening to this on YouTube. Exactly. Um, I hope you enjoyed listening to us while doing whatever you've been doing. Yeah. And, Nate, anything you want to add? I don't think so. I think I've said everything that I was going to say about this film. Yeah, so uh, like I said, if you're watching this on YouTube or listening to this, just like, comment, subscribe, check out our gaming videos, our vlogs, our unboxings, all sorts. If you're listening to this on your preferred podcast streaming service of choice, subscribe to us on there as well. If you listen to us on your way to work, thanks for letting us guide you on your way in. <laughs> and you've got a massive commute if you listen to this on your way to work. We hope and on your way back, I hope you had a good day at work and... <laughs> You can chill out and enjoy a gaming of one your own with a well-deserved cuppa. Or well, even well. a bit of ah, kid. Ah, some mocks for the working man. Sip of mocks for that working man. So yeah, there's still plenty more to come and we'll catch you on the next one. Tararabi. Toodles. As they say. Ooh.